right, so here I go, alone into the crypt. You can be active again tonight, guys. These guys are professionals and they will be respectful. You have my permission to walk, talk, make smells, appear as full apparitions, throw stuff if you'd like to, whatever you'd like. Give them the full experience. Welcome to the Paranormal Files. Tonight, we have an extremely historic and important investigation in the history of this channel. Do you know who we are? Tonight, Jeff and I are here alone at the Washoe Club. Standing out here with the Washoe Club behind me. Here it is. I gotta tell you guys how just freaky. This place just looks. Ugh, it's giving me the heebie-jeebies. And they could not save that little girl. She passed away right here in this room. In total, 12 people were killed. This is where they had 77 bodies stacked in 1874. They would take the bodies up there and drop them. So when it attacks people, it's three scratches. When it knocks, it's three knocks. When it's active, you smell sulfuric smells. There, there's a very dark entity that is not human inside of that room. It really is active. Just take a look at me over here. This building is like a labyrinth. There's rooms, like look at this. There's two rooms down there. Just two days ago, they were hearing somebody shuffling through things in this room and it's padlocked shut. Nobody has a key except the owner. In the last few days, all the activity has been spiking because Both the GoPro, they're completely dead. Are you coming in? Dude. Dude. Ah! Oh, Jesus. What? What? Man? Oh, what the fuck was that? Sacrifice of bones deal? Yeah, yeah, that's a devil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A dolly is like. Here alone in the crypt? No one's here. I just fucking heard something, too. Multiple murders happened. What the fuck? Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. I just. to the Paranormal Files. Tonight, we have an extremely historic and important investigation in the history of this channel. Look around, guys. Do you know who we are? If you don't, when I tell you the name, you're probably gonna know. Tonight, Jeff and I are here alone at the Washoe Club in Virginia City, Nevada. Now, you'll probably remember the Washoe Club from the original Ghost Adventures documentary, along with so many other paranormal TV shows. This place is routinely named one of the most haunted locations in the entire United States of America, and it's no wonder why. There have been multiple murders. There have been reports of a demon, literally, you'll see in the interview, a demon crawling on all fours on the walls of this place. This room right here, the ballroom, supposedly haunted by a little girl named Gretchen who died here in this room. And not only that, there have been there have been all sorts of terrible things. There was an explosion that killed multiple people here in the building. I mean, you'll see in the interview, all day, uh, we have been experiencing paranormal activity in here and it, it really is active. Just take a look at me over here. This building is like a labyrinth. There's rooms, like look at this, there's two rooms down there. This room, they were saying, just two days ago, they were hearing somebody shuffling through things in this room and it's padlocked shut. Nobody has a key except the owner. Now, over here, this goes, I mean, look guys, show them this way. All the way down there, there's, there's four or five rooms that direction over here. This just stretches all the way around. There's the stairway down to the street and upstairs. That's where the demon lives. You guys are in for a treat tonight. Welcome to the Paranormal Files. Okay, everybody, so we're here um, doing the Washoe Club episode, finally. A lot of people have requested it, and I know two really good friends of mine who just visited the Washoe Club, and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves to you guys, and we're just gonna talk about what happened when they visited, so. Hey, my name is Omar, Omar Gosh TV. <laughs> And I'm Tiffany. <laughs> Hi, I'm Omar. Up, you know? 
But yeah, we visited the Washoe Club in, I think it was in July, right? It was hot whenever it was. It was over the summer. I mean, it was so hot that they didn't have air conditioning. We were staying. Beautiful place. Another haunted hotel. What was it called? Silver? The Silver Queen. Silver Queen. Oh, I had dinner there. I had dinner there. You should definitely stay there next time. I, I had, actually, that was the very first paranormal experience, so they say, for for Zach from Ghost Adventures. But really? Was yeah, that I hotel? Yeah, it was a cool place. It was hot, though. They don't have air conditioning there, but an awesome place <laughs> if, if, if you like haunted hotels. But yeah, we, we went to the Washoe Club. Funny story, when we got there, they were getting ready to close. We kind of came like last minute. And the tour guide, her name's Shelly, she was on her way out. And I was, and I, she was, I think she was in the middle of counting her tips. She was. And I was like, hey, um, I'll give you a little bit more to count if you could take <laughs> us on a quick little tour. And she agreed. And she was like, no, 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 I don't need any money. She was so nice. And she was like, why don't you just buy buy me a drink? I'm like, okay, well, hey, we'll buy her a drink. And, and we still gave her a good generous tip, by the way. But uh, she did amazing. But uh, while she's taking us up, you know, that stairway, you know, the, the stairway that you, you go up on the side. Mm -hmm. I felt, and I felt this on the way up and on the way down. I'm not sure if you felt the same way, but I felt like something was going to push on me down. On the way down, leaving. You felt I that? I felt like I was going to be pushed. Okay, I, I felt like something was going to push me down the stairs. I'm here walking around. The place is, it's pretty spooky in itself, especially during the day. You don't usually get really crazy scary vibes from a place during the day and this is one of those places that you do anyways i'm walking around you know nothing crazy is happening but i get to i think it's like the second floor and i start hearing footsteps up above me and i'm thinking to myself well maybe they got a rap problem you know wrote it or something but no it sounds like somebody's up there walking around i confirmed it with shelly and she said that tends to happen on the third floor which is another haunted floor i don't know have did you go to the third floor at all we went up there and i think that's the creepiest floor out of all of them in the building the third floor was like i didn't want to stay up there too long just because that's where they have that demon room right with the door that slams them right yeah, the mean guy Mm -hmm. Okay, another story, because we were on that, we were in that particular room, and Shelly's telling us a story. I think the, the ghost that they call him by, his name is, is Scotty. Oh, wait, yeah, I think that was, was his it, name. Was it Scotty? And then, you know, the guy with the pet monkey yep. or whatever. Well, anyways, she's telling me, you know, hey, sometimes he opens and closes this door. And I asked it. I'm like, you know, hey, asked him, can you open and close this door? I, I mean, immediately as I asked this question, we hear this this really strong sound in like the the end of the room. People are in my video saying that they that they caught like a figure. I don't know if it's true. I don't know what it is, but what we heard was something with the wind outside, and we did confirm that. We kind of debunked like what I mean instantly. We were like, hey, that's that was something. But they didn't go against the idea of as soon as I asked something, like something with the wind happened, which is very odd. I mean, it could have happened three seconds before, three seconds after, but I mean, it was like right away when I asked. So, and then Tiffany has an experience there. Well, to when, play off of what you said in that room, she even played us a tape recorder. Remember the, oh, yeah. in that room where the door slams, she recorded with a tape recorder in there. And when she played it back, you can clearly hear a guy say, Shut the door. Shut the door. And, yeah. we, and you, you put that in your video. Didn't yeah. You? It said shut the door. I heard so it. In the beginning, I believe he says shut the door. And then he says shut the damn door. And then shut the door. I'll do it again. Wow. I only heard it the one time. Great. 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 So in so this cool. room alone, you guys, over 150 people have been scratched. Mm -hmm. And he was so nice, he even wrote on this board right here. <gasps> JWT. That's what I think it is. J. And there's three marks. Yeah. Like a W, a T. I think that like when wind, stuff like that happens, even if it's debunkable, sometimes it's like it happens at the perfect time and it's a little too weird, you know, to just be the wind you know it's like a vibe right that's how i feel even if it is like a totally rational explanation sometimes you have that feeling like hmm that was kind of like weird you know chills almost 
Right. Yeah. Like, what are the chances? Like, you're asking something and it happens, you know? Exactly. Tiffany, uh-huh. I'll let you continue, though, on what you were saying. Oh, so we were in the first room on the first floor. It's towards the back. It's called the Crypt, where, what was it? They used to, like, hold bodies there because the ground was too cold or something like that to bury them. So they would stack these bodies in this crypt. Well, right when we go in there, he wasn't even recording because he's thinking that we're just, like, going over this, like, interview thing first, and we're just, like, learning about the place. And as soon as we walk in, I feel something, like, tug on my hair. So I just went like that, thinking that I'm like close to the wall because it's like a brick wall and I thought my hair got stuck in it. And the lady's like, something touch your hair. And I was like, I don't know, why? Like, I, what? And she was like, yeah, it happens a lot to women in here. It, their hair gets pulled. So when I look back, I'm not, I'm like this far away from the, the wall. And I was just like, oh my God. And I was like, you're not even recording. <laughs> yeah. That's how it so always happens it. though. It's always yeah. like you're not recording that crazy shit happens every time, you know? Oh, and the melted finger. The oh yeah she took this really yeah. weird picture where it like it looks like this old disfigured finger it she was did. the weirdest thing it almost looked like a like a burnt candle just melting <laughs> like it, i mean it was just like this creepy finger like and and that's in my video you could you can use that anytime footage. we go somewhere i'm walking around and i'm just constantly snapping pictures or like doing my own videoing to see if i catch anything to add to his videos people are like that could have been shelly which it could have been because she would point and show stuff but in that particular picture she was over here and her this finger is going like this and it's like really long like melting so i'm like unless her finger was melting <laughs> it wasn't it didn't look like it no, was shelly. it definitely wasn't her finger mm. Yeah, as far as, uh, you know, having anything demonic or anything like that, I mean, you know, I don't think we spent enough time in there, but I think the short amount of time that we did get to spend there, we did catch it was really quite cool. a bit. Personally, I would say that that building just feels off, you know, mm-hmm. just, I don't know what the hell it is, but there's something about it that just feels freaky, you know? Yeah. Oh, it definitely does. You oh, catch and then the, the girl, the woman in blue, her room. Oh yeah. Wasn't she like almost, she, her throat was cut so deep. It was like, she was almost decapitated. Do you remember? I just remember this. We were walking out. Cause I was like, I like this room. As morbid as that sounds, I liked being in her room. And when we were walking out to leave, didn't like, I, it was either a like giggle in my ear. And I stopped and I turned around and I looked at you and I was like, did you just like get close to my ear? <laughs> I remember and, that. Yeah. Cause it was, I can't remember if it was like. I a, didn't hear it, but. Yeah, but it was in my loud. ear, and I was just like, oh my God, something just in my ear. I mean, it could have been a bug. There could have been something flying around. I don't know, but it, it came pretty cool, and I was just like, I really like this room. <laughs> wow. And you guys were only in there for like, what, an hour, two hours? No, yeah. we were in there for a few hours. It was like maybe two hours. But, yeah. I mean, she super let, she cool She walked place. us around for a while. Yeah, if, yeah. if you're ever in Virginia City, that is a must. Mm-hmm. Like, go on the tour. They're great. Everybody's so knowledgeable there. Even if it's during the day, which... Most of the tours usually run. You're going to catch some. Well, thank you guys so much. And uh, hey, you're welcome, man. Yeah, happy new year, you know. Happy hey, new you year too. to you. shooting on my iPhone because we don't have any of the camera equipment out. My hair is wet because I showered and it hasn't dried yet, but I just had to document this moment. Standing out here with the Washoe Club behind me, here it is. Um, I gotta tell you guys how just freaky this place just looks. It looks, the energy is like, ugh, it's giving me the heebie-jeebies. It's really cold out. It's about the thunderstorm tonight. Um, it's gonna snow later. When we just went up there, Jeff said that he just he could feel the energy and I can also just feel it in there. It is thick. And just look at the shots that I'm putting on screen. Look at how creepy this is. It's like, I don't know. I haven't felt like this in a long time. Been so excited for a location as, as the Washoe Club, but here we are. And dude, this place lives up to its name. So it'll be cool. Do ask it again like you just said you do. You can be active again tonight, guys. These guys are professionals and they will be respectful. You have my permission to walk, talk, 
make smells, appear as full apparitions, throw stuff if you'd like to, whatever you'd like, give them the full experience. Appreciate you. And there you go, man. It's my office. Wow. Strange office. So, oh. you guys. My name is Justin. I am a head manager here at the Washoe Club located in Virginia City, Nevada. Some backstory on our town is Virginia City was founded in 1859 due to a gentleman coming out of a saloon, spilling some whiskey, and naming the town after himself. Later on, towards the early 1860s, uh, into the mid half of that year, mining operations began booming here on the Comstock. That is the big silver load, which is located right underneath our feet. Then we became Virginia City from Virginia Town due to the fact that we had a population of around 25,000 people. Nowadays though, we only have about 950 personnel, including myself. But the building right here, the old Washoe, this is the oldest saloon here in this entire town, built in 1862, two years older than the state of Nevada itself. This building is also known to be one of the most haunted locations in the entire town due to the fact that it not only served as just a saloon, which occupies the whole first floor of our establishment, but on the second and third floors, which you will see in a little bit, it harbored everything from a boarding house to a doctor's office, libraries, and everything in between. The last year anybody occupied this place was 1984. That being said, let's go inside and take a quick look. All right. Oh, Jesus. That is one of the colored it, angles that I've... It's very ominous, especially when we get to the third floor and we can look back down. Oh, it yeah. can get weird and it is very common for people to come down these stairs and actually feel somebody either behind them or looking up or down them see figures moving. It's interesting. The past two days we've actually been hearing footsteps walk around on the second floor on that side of the stairwell, which is to the left towards our ballroom. And I mean, it's so audible. We were out here screaming up here, to, telling people to come out and down, and there was nobody in the building when we walked through. Crazy stuff. This place wow. is always active 100% of the time. You are in the right spot for what you guys do. It is awesome. <laughs> yeah. This building is a lot larger than it actually looks when you're down on the street level, which is uh, C Street, which is the main road through this entire town. The building on the second and third story is 9,000 square feet, meaning each floor, second and third story, is roughly 4,500 square feet in total. This place is massive. For a quick overview of what you're gonna see throughout this uh, filming, this right here is original wallpaper. It was put up in 1862. A lot of the furniture that we have throughout this building is not original to this establishment. The majority of it was actually sold in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, I'm not too sure why, so I'm not gonna come up with anything. So we had to replace a lot of it with stuff from the same time period, if you will. This couch is uh, between 110 and 120 years old. This buggy right here is from what we think early 1900s. Kind of creepy, adds just a weird vibe to this place. These rooms right here, originally in 1862 um, up to 1875, would have been used as doctor's offices, retail space, other additional offices, and in just a little bit, we'll go to the library section towards the back. The miners occupied the third floor. That was their boarding house. So when they would get off work from the mines, they'd go and stay upstairs. Then they'd go back down and go right back into the mines. Right below our feet here in Virginia City, we have over 750 miles of mining tunnels. We also think that is why our town is so haunted. It's not the buildings per se. Those mines, you would have had a lot of hazards. You would have experienced fires, cave-ins, explosions, poison gas, cyanide, arsenic, dead air, extremely hot water, which would cause third degree burns and on average working temperatures of roughly 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Miners on average back then would work um, nine to 12 hour shifts. So you can imagine working down to those elements as long as they were doing, a lot of people were getting injured and a lot of people were being killed daily due to that um, conditions. But the amount of mining tunnels that we have underneath us, 
Right below the Washoe Club, there's actually one tunnel that runs from here and it goes all the way up to Mount Davidson, which is directly behind us. There's a Ponderosa Saloon, which is two doors down. They actually have a mining tunnel entrance that starts in the back of their building and runs into the back and then they link together. So whenever you're in this town, no matter where you are, you are never truly alone. It is absolutely amazing. These miners, due to the robust amount of gold and silver, were the highest paid miners in the entire United States. On average, they were paid $4 per day. Everywhere else in the United States, average miner pay was only 80 cents per day. That's a pretty big pay increase. With that being said, let's go this way and I'll start telling you all about the crazy happenings here in the Washoe Club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can feel what you guys are saying. It feels a little heavier right now. It's pretty what, what, is, real, what, do you, what do you mean? Um, oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, fucking oh, hell! Oh, God damn it, man! Oh, I'm a fucking jumpy dude! I'll point out the rest Jesus. of them for you, bro. Jesus, sorry. So, bro. this is Willie Nelson. <laughs> this is Willie Nelson. <laughs> Holy shit. That got me. You'll get used to their location. There's one, two, yeah. there's five, four, five of these dudes. So, I'll point out the other two. You beat me before I can turn around and point them out. I'm sorry. That was pretty good. Oh man. So what I mean by a heavier feeling is, um, so when you usually walk into this building, if the building itself or the town is not active, it feels like a normal building. If you walk into your own home, you don't feel anything heavy. When you walk into a place when it's becoming active, in my experience, your hair kind of stands up, that's commonplace, where you'll feel almost like an atmospheric pressure change almost, just the pressure on your shoulders, your chest, everything starts to feel like heavier, almost like something is compressing down upon you. That's how the building feels right now. Usually that's a sign that there may be some good activity happening up inside this place. So we call this room that we're standing in the Shadow Man Room. The reason it's called that is because very frequently myself, my coworkers, and people on tours see shadow people in this room. Ghost Adventures, when they were here in 2009, their second time being in this building, they captured a shadow man right against this back wall right there. There were only two people in this room and they were taking pictures using the flash on their cameras and in one of those images, three human shadows showed up. I'll show you guys a picture of a shadow man that we captured in this room. I want to say it was about six and a half ish months ago now. I was giving a tour and you know I tell all the people who come on my tours take videos and take pictures. It's absolutely free to do that. And someone took a picture and they sent it back to us right after the tour they sent it over to me. And there was this big white light thing just sitting right in this region. The picture was dark. So I brightened the exposure up and there was this little shadow guy holding what looks like a scroll standing against this window frame. You can see it right there. You can see his arms, his legs, and he's wearing what appears to be a derby or a bowler style hat. Isn't that cool? Wow. Crazy, isn't it? Quite rich. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So you can see stuff like this um, most of the time. Usually I get shadow people in this one. That's really about what I've had happen in this room per se. Now, we have windows that look at the inside of our building. The reason that is, is because in 1862, the roof of this building was actually made out of glass in order to allow the natural sunlight to illuminate the entire establishment because back in those years, electricity didn't, did not exist. It was all candlelit. Over time though, birds have a tendency to fly through old single pane glass windows. They shatter them out. So we had to remove the glass roofing to uh, harbor a metal roof nowadays. But still, the fact that these windows still exist is fantastic. That big box thing that you can see right there, that is the cap to the spiral staircase. When we go downstairs, I'll talk about that a little bit because historically it is amazing, but we had to cap it off because it is unsafe now. If you climb up it, you're gonna fall through it. Then you, we're probably gonna add you to the uh, ghost collection here at the Washoe Club. And I don't want that happening to any of you guys. That being said, follow me this way and we'll head to the library section of this building. Now there is a mannequin sitting right here. <laughs> Don't let Geronimo scare you. It is gone. Uh, <laughs> awesome. So this whole section right here, this is the library section of the Washoe building. Um, we found historical documentation that states what it looked like. So the documentation mentioned that it had dual pocket doors. That's what these are right here. These are the doors that slide out and then back into the wall. The library back then also had a drop ceiling. You can see there's little notches right above these doorways for that drop ceiling. Sometime in the 1950s, they removed that drop ceiling and left the wood gapped. So one day we might actually make that back to being solid. But what I want you to do is look right here. That blue wallpaper that you can see up there, 
that was actually put up in 1862 right after this building was built. That is original to the building. For reference in time, when this building was built and that wallpaper was put up, Abraham Lincoln was the president of the United States. The Civil War was still being fought. And as I said earlier, Nevada did not exist. We became a state in 1864. This is 62. So this building is older than the entire state of Nevada by two years. That's pretty awesome, especially with the fact that it's still standing. Now, fast forwarding 13 years to 1875, that's the year that the Millionaires Club had to leave their clubhouse on B Street because in 1875, there was a fire that started on A Street, which is two streets up, and it burnt 95 to 98% of the town in about three and a half hours. The Washoe Club survived that fire. When we get downstairs into the crypt, you can actually see how close the flames came to burning this building down, but it did not succeed. So the Millionaires Club, they took all of their money and they purchased this building and they made it one of the richest clubs in Virginia City. Some of those members of that club are people we've learned about through history classes and things like that. People like Thomas Edison, President Ulysses S. Grant was a member here, Adolf Sutro. So if any of you viewers are ever plan on going to San Francisco or are located there, the Sutro Baths, um, the Cliff House, the cable car systems were all created by Adolf Sutro and he started right here in Virginia City. You had John Mackey, who was a multi-millionaire back in those times, William Tecumseh Sherman, Samuel Clemens, who's also known as the author Mark Twain, and he started right here in town as well. Even Edwin Booth was a member here. John Wilkes Booth's brother Edwin was a member of this club for a very long time, and he would perform plays at Piper's Opera House, which is just one street up and a couple blocks over. This entire town is connected around the entire world. It is fantastic. Unfortunately, in the years of 1897-98, the mining operations in town began to decline, causing the Millionaires Club to lose a lot of their investment money. So they had to disband themselves. What also aided in that um, disbandment was in April of 1898, roughly, there was a collapse on that side of our building. And when we go there, you can actually see the deviations in the flooring from when they rebuilt it. But a bathhouse next door leaked so much water, the exterior wall of the ballroom completely disintegrated, the roof fell into the building and stuff. The Millionaires Club, losing all of their money in the mining decline, didn't have enough to actually fully rebuild that place, so they completely disbanded themselves. The building then sat dormant until about 1920, 1930, and then it became a hotel of sorts all the way until 1984. From what I've been told and read, this place was only $20 a week. I would like those rates back myself, that would be awesome. With that being said, now I'm gonna show you guys the area we call the crypt that I previously mentioned from up above. This area is awesome. For paranormal experiences, I have not had much ever happen in this section of the building, personally. I have had people, though, capture orbs and things like that going down this hallway in that direction. So you might catch something like that. I've had people think they've seen a shadow person or something like that. I haven't experienced that personally. So right here, this is a little um, area that back in the day, there was actually a doorway up here, but they blocked it off and turned that into just like a little low like type of roof line or something. But if you stand right here and look through these, but if you stand right here and look through these, but if you stand right here and look through these slats down, you can look down inside the crypt space and I'll step out of your way so you can actually check that out. Now, the reason we call that space the crypt is because it was actually used as a place to store bodies during the winters here in Virginia City from um, 1870 until 1922 pretty morbid. The reason they had to do that back then is because during the winters, like it is now, our soil freezes like concrete, meaning you cannot dig through it by hand. So back then, without ex um, modern excavation equipment, we all say, they could not create new graves at all of our cemeteries. So they had to put the dead somewhere. We had a body storage, the Silver Dollar Saloon had one, as did the Silver Queen Hotel. Not very many people know that the Cigar and Bar, which is located on the north end of our town, that's actually the Old Town Mortuary, so a lot of these bodies were overflow from that establishment. In 1874, there was a typhoid epidemic that occurred killing off a lot of people. We had 77 bodies stacked inside of burlap sacks down in that crypt space. The majority of those bodies, unfortunately, were infants, toddlers, and kids. That's why if you happen to ever come visit our town and walk around our cemetery, Take note of all of the death dates. 1874 is very prevalent and a lot of the ages are five and younger. Now the reason disease would run rampant here in town back then is as I mentioned earlier, we had a lot of people living here. In 1876, we had a population of 25,000 people. On any given day, at any given time, the people from Gold Hill and Silver City, which are located a few miles in that direction, they would visit us. And they say we would have around 100,000 people walking our, our city streets. Los Angeles in the same year only had 8,000. So we had a lot more people than LA back then. Nowadays though, that is not quite the case. That being said, my friends, follow me this way.
And then once again, don't let Jawan know sitting right there in that corner. Yeah, <laughs> don't want that to happen. <laughs> this right here actually used to be a window, but at some point they blew it out and turned it into a walkway. <laughs> Not too sure when that actually occurred, but it's interesting. They did that to the one upstairs too. And we'll see that. We do have locked doors. These are just antique storage rooms. I have had people report hearing what sounds like a person or something in there rummaging through it, but there's no other entryway to get into this and it is completely latched shut. I don't even have a key to this door. So if you guys hear something in here tonight, just know that nobody's snuck in and is messing with stuff. You're probably hearing one of the entities for whatever reason in that room, um, which is just weird. Watch your step right here guys so you don't trip over this. Two days ago, uh, two days ago or yesterday, I can't remember which, we did hear somebody walking around in this room and rummaging through stuff. This is locked. Um, and it was so loud and prevalent with every footstep you could hear in there, you could feel the floor actually like vibrating with each step. And these are the original floors. So if something bounces on this side, you'll feel it in there. And I was sitting here just like, hey, is someone in there? Because you can't get in there. It would stop. Then we'd sit here and then you'd start hearing it again and you could hear like almost like a muffled talking or something. It was really, really interesting. So with the locked rooms, don't be shocked if you hear stuff. It is very, very, very common. So let's super on this way so you can kind of get a gist of how big this or a labyrinth this place is. You can see how the these into two different rooms is how they built it. This is a good room to show you how hard the building actually collapsed when that happened in 1898. If you look at these two windows, you can see how much of a slant there is to this. And if I stand, I'll stand vertical in front, you can see how much of the deviation the building is actually listing. When that collapse happened and the roof came down, it actually blew the janitor who was living, I want to believe in this room, almost out of the windows. But he came back in, ran to the back of the building, went to the Millionaire's Club and was like, hey, the building's falling down. They came out because they didn't believe him. Yeah, the building was pretty much collapsing. So they all ran out. That was the end of that club. So they rebuilt the building to the slant that it acquired. You can see if you look at the top of the windows, right there, they actually had pie shims up there to make the windows properly operate and somewhat seal again. Extremely interesting. So right now when we walk to the ballroom, you're actually walking slightly uphill inside of a building. It's it's almost like a fun house effect. Yeah, it really is. It's disorienting. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. This is kind of just like a little overview of some stuff you would have found in an old building back then, a little gas stove. This is a radiator water heater. Water would go up and it would just naturally heat your rooms and stuff. Pretty interesting. This is the world famous ballroom, my friends. This is actually where the TV series Ghost Adventures got their start with that shadow man that was caught walking around this room. But I won't talk about them. Um, personally, this room is one of the more active rooms that I've ever had stuff happen to. When I first started working here, for instance, I was having stuff happen in my home. I live two streets behind this building. My house is already haunted. There's a male or female entity in there, or both. But after I started working in this location, activity just started ramping up. I had stuff moving around. I would hear more footsteps, talking, uneasiness, things like that. So myself and my girlfriend, we came down here and we sat right on these benches. And I was like, hey, um, I'm here all the time, you know who I am, you know I live behind this building, stop following me home. This is your place, what stays in my house stays there, you stay here, kind of thing. And I was like, if we're on a term of agreement, can you make an audible sound so I can hear you since I cannot see you? Right above us, right as soon as I said that, we heard footsteps walk all over the third story. At the end of this hallway, we heard a female giggle. And um, somewhere on that side of the building, we heard like a so I looked at my girlfriend and said, cool. They listened and off we went. It's also real common for me in this uh, section of the building to hear at the end of this hallway, which is where the stairs are, a female giggle. I've always heard it. I've had people on tours hear it. And it's just a quick like <laughs> laugh. Um, in this area and in that hallway, you will start to smell a lady's perfume. So I'm not sure what entity is in this whole section, but there's a female entity that is very, very active in here. Um, we've heard heavy footsteps walk around in here. Um, I've had people doing investigations pick up almost like music, like old ragtime Scott Joplin type stuff. Um, parties where it sounds like two people are like celebrating, yelling back and forth the whole nine yards. Going back in time, this has not always been a ballroom. Before the Millionaire's Club took this place over, so from 1862 until 1875, this room was actually the doctor's office. 
in uh, October 20th of 1864, there was a 10 year old little girl who was actually playing out in front of our building. Her name, we like to call her Gretchen. Historically, we don't know her name. We know she was a German immigrant, so we just gave her the moniker Gretchen because it kind of fits naming of that time period. But as she was playing, she went across the street and she was hit and run over by a horse-drawn carriage, but she did not die right away. So the townspeople grabbed Gretchen and they brought her into this room because of it being the doctor's office, but medical technology back then, not the best, and they could not save that little girl. She passed away right here in this room. I've had some people on tours take pictures through that far left doorway, and every now and again, they will actually capture what looks like a little girl standing against the lath and plaster. It is amazing when that happens, but roughly, Two and a half, three-ish months ago now, I had a guy on a tour and he took a picture through that doorway. And what he captured, it's not Gretchen. I don't know who it is, but through that doorway, he captured a full body oh apparition. Oh my God. And it looks almost like it's hanging. Now what's interesting about that is Ugh. about a month ago, I was showing this to someone and they had an ovulus device. That's the device that says the words out loud, like a computer lady it. voice. Dude, you're gonna love it. I've had so much interaction with those things in this place. And we were talking about this image, and I was like, it almost looks like he's hanging. And then the ovulus goes, Frederick, hanged. I have no idea who Frederick is. I've never heard of a Frederick being hung in this building, but to have an entity where it looks like his feet are off of the ground, almost like he's suspended, and then as I'm talking about it, it says Frederick hanged. <clears throat> That's pretty interesting. Back in those days, the 1800s, murders up here were quite common, so it's possible he could have been hung outside of the building, maybe hung off the apartment back behind us in the weird common area, which is on the other side of those windows. You just never know. And a real interesting picture that I um, recently just got from a person who was doing one of my tours towards that doorway is what we believe to be something actually manifesting. It looks almost like smoke. What? That's pretty cool. That's real interesting. That is bizarre. Isn't that cool? For something real cool, and I'm not too sure how well your cameras are gonna come up, you might have to dim your light just a little bit, or you actually might be able to pick it up right here, this, this sparkling effect. So this is called oh, yeah. the Diamond Dust Mirror. This was made for our building between um, roughly 1858 or 1862. Sorry, I've never had that happen. Are you having electronic issues? It's common here. It's gone off three times now and now it has this. What? That's very common in this building. Electronic issues are super, super common. Lost the light, lost recover, recover that. Okay. I don't know what to... Yeah, it's, it's possible they're starting to mess with your stuff. I've had it happen all the time. Okay, well we just had a camera glitch there. Oh, that was weird. Okay. okay well, I've never seen that actually. I've had camera, those years. Uh, camera stuff mess up. I've had the most recent one, which to me it was actually pretty, pretty funny was uh, I was doing a small tour. It was me, a guy, his girlfriend, and I think another one of their friends. It was his girlfriend, his wife, something like that. And as we were walking through the building, his phone kept taking pictures. So as we're walking, and it was only when it was like down. So as we're walking, all of a sudden the flash would go off. And he was like, my phone is not on the camera. So he like showed it and it's on the black screen like it's off. It still keeps just taking pictures of the floor and he turns it on, it goes to its lock screen, there's no camera thing, it still keeps taking pictures. He unlocked it and it just went right to his home screen. So he opened up his camera thing, the flash button isn't on and it still kept just automatically taking stuff and he was like, okay, let's try and see if we can fix this. So he went like this, cleared it, turned his screen off and it still kept taking pictures. That happened, I think three weeks ago. I've had people come into this building with 96% charged phones. They come in, they go to start recording, their phone dies. Like it won't turn on, nothing. We get right outside of the building, back onto the street, phone kicks right back on. It's real, real weird. I'll actually talk about audio interference when we go to the poker room in a second. So as I was saying though, before that happened, which is pretty cool, <laughs> this is what they call a diamond dust mirror. These are very, very rare. What these are made out of is basically pure silver and mercury mixed together, which allows the silver dust to sparkle and glimmer through it, and that's what prevents them from ever aging. This dates to about 1858 to 1862, and this did belong to the Washer Club back then. So just think of the amount of people back in those days who would have stood right in front of this thing. Isn't that amazing? We're blessed to have this in our possession. Now we'll walk this way towards the poker room. This area right here, and I'm not too sure if your cameras can shine through these windows. When we get upstairs, there's a window that's open that you can look down into this. This is just a common area. So this is how the, the people back then would have been able to go in between all the buildings to get where they were going. Because with a population of 25,000 people, and in our saloon we have a drawing 
that shows kind of how many buildings there were back then, you had to build stuff on top of each other. So the people would have come out of that apartment, drop right down to the common area, and just gone down through that and shot off the back of the building and right onto the main street. So it's real cool. When we get up to the third story, you guys can put your cameras out of the window. And I wanna say it's about a 50 or 60 foot drop. I mean, straight down. It's, it's creepy. I've, it's weird, weird, weird. So make sure you guys watch your step right here. Then right here, the floor is slightly elevated and I don't want you tripping on those. So this right here, this is the Millionaire's Club poker room. This table is the original 1875 slash 76 um, Pharaoh playing card poker table for that club. So sitting here back then, you would have seen President Grant playing cards with Thomas Edison, John Mackey, Samuel Clemens, so on and so forth. With that club, you had a lot of gambling. On average, their games would last three to four days straight without stopping. That's insane. That is just crazy. You also had a lot of booze. In those years, whiskey was actually cheaper than water, and we actually had over 140 saloons right there on C Street. So just imagine how much alcohol was flowing around this town. Our town slogan these days is, we don't have a town drunk, we have a drunk town. Now with the Millionaire's Club, what they're drinking, there not only was a bar downstairs, there was actually a bar located right along this back wall, underneath that little window that's sitting right there. That bar top is now located downstairs in our saloon. It's the smaller, darker colored one that sits closer to kind of where the display cabinets are. That bar is from 1862 and President Grant used to get his drinks off of that. Super, super historical. You also had a lot of women within that club, but they could not come up the beautiful spiral staircase for the first few years after it was built. They actually had to sneak them in through this door right there. That side door right there is where the ladies would come in because they had to keep their interactions hush hush. They were known as the ladies of the night. I'll let you guys think about that one. That's all I'm saying about those beautiful girls. Yeah. Now for my paranormal stuff, I've had a lot of experiences in this section of the room, both this poker room and this weird like little intermediary room. I've heard everything from footsteps. Um, one of the weirdest ones that we had, I had investigators here and there is a dark entity in this building. I don't really like talking about it in the building, but for you guys, I'll go into detail about it, especially when we hit that room. But it followed me home. So I was sitting at my house and I heard three heavy knocks and it just resounded through the entire house. The walls, the ceiling, I mean, I was immersed in just these three loud knocks. So I came down because the investigators invited me back down here with them later that night. So I was coming in anyway. And we were sitting at this table and uh, they had an ovulus sitting on the table with us and um, K2 meters. And I started telling them, I was like, just so you guys know that there's a dark thing here in this building and when it's active, all of the good gets suppressed. It followed me home. And uh, the ovulus then said, um, suppression, he's here. And I was like, this is the thing I'm talking about. This is what actually followed me home. Now that it's out and about, you're not gonna have real good interactions. You're gonna be dealing with something more darker, I guess I'll say. Then the ovulus said, um, house, demon. And we're all looking at each other and we're like, what, like this is crazy. And I was like, this is why uh, my girlfriend's mother gave me a bunch of crystals, I guess they're called, to put above my windows and door frames to try and keep my house safe. Soon as I said that, the ovulus then went, are you afraid? It made a full on sentence, are you afraid? Those guys, they were filming it, including myself. After all that happened, when we went down to kind of reset, we all tried to play those video clips back. It only had video footage. There was no sound on any of the devices that we tried filming it. So I, of course, deleted the file because there's no point in you know, watching it without any context. But that interaction alone, it was intelligent. It was interacting and the K2s were going off at the same time it would start talking. It was the craziest thing. I've had people set up laser grids in this room pointing that direction towards that wall and they'll get something actually literally walking across this room, breaking the laser grids. And you can hear the footsteps as it walks um, across. I sat up here, I think it was last week or the week before, and I had an hour to kill. So I sat in that chair right there, this one, with my phone on the thing, and I was just, you know, talking. Hey guys, if you're here, come down, talk to me, teach me how to play favor. I've never played poker games in my life, so teach me how to play a card game. And down by the staircase, which is through those doors to the left, down in that section, I could hear footsteps and talking. Now I'm the only person up here in the building. I do security stuff and all that stuff for the washout. So I know I'm the only person in the building. So I said, and I'll play it for you guys, I don't know how well you guys will pick it up because it's really quick. But I was like, I'm sitting down um, in the poker room kind of next to the ballroom. Why don't you come over here and say hi? Right as soon as I'm finishing the I and hi, a quick whistle goes <laughs> right next to me. I didn't even hear it until I played it back. So the audio clip, it's kind of quiet. And then I had I boosted the audio as loud as I could get it using the apps on my phone to try and clear it up. But it, it's it's 
it's pretty cool. Listen careful to this. So come on over here. I'm in the poke room, guys. By the ballroom. Come up to say hi. That, that quick. Mm -hmm. You guys heard that? So, yeah, you don't know what you're going to get, especially in this section. This is real, real active. I've had REM pods go off in this thing. The, the whole nine yards. Smell of cigar smoke through this whole section, too, is real, real, real common. Um, with that being said, we will go. I got to say, when yeah. you were explaining that. Did you hear Phil something? Did, did you hear a really loud, like. Yeah, I heard I, that over there. Yeah, I felt that, like, on my feet. Okay. I've been hearing, obviously, other, other things already. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's weird, also. Just to interject, we never even got this on camera last night about our investigation. Do you want to just explain the whistle you heard? It's like a weird coincidence. Yeah, that is kind of weird you brought up a whistle because we were in uh, Crumb Point Mill, if you're familiar with yeah. that or not, right? Yeah. And yeah. he had gone out to the car. I had walked up uh, Cassie, who was our, our guide, mm -hmm. up to the very top to close up. And as we were way at the top, <clears throat> I literally heard about as loud a whistle as you could like this. It went... And, I, and we're stopping. I'm like, okay, Colin, we know that's you. Come on, man. We know that's you. We just kept walking down. Yeah. And then about maybe another 10 or 15 seconds, same thing. <whistles> same cadence. And I, and I stopped and cast time. I'm like, okay, he's, he's screwing with us. Like, Colin, come on, man. We know that's you. And then, of course, we walk back down out the door. Did you hear that? <sighs> wow. And then he's in the car. And I'm like, dude, okay. You, you, the you whole area right. is, I mean, <laughs> but it was very dude. Everything, person. we've been hearing bangs. All of us were just talking about that, and it's something over. I think I just heard one over there. Dude, I gotta say, I'm gonna just interject on myself too. When you were just talking about mm -hmm. that experience, I got just lit up with, and not even like just. It's just really weirdly strong. Yeah. And I just felt like it's like ringing my right ear. Which is just Almost strange. like tinnitus, like yeah, Whoo! yes. I get that all the time. I always get that. I get that. I'm like, I just I feel it, you know. And just a, a couple really quick things. Last night you were talking about the atmospheric. Yeah. My right ear was plugged, remember? Mm -hmm. And I, my sinuses were full. And then we had a uh, through the obelisk, two things came through. Names. One was George, which is who she thought was in the building. Okay. Actually came through. And uh, this is weird. Where is? Look at this. But you're way out of focus. <laughs> that being said, we'll actually go up to the third floor. That music right there, that is the church. So don't be shocked if you hear that. But people do report hearing uh, ragtime piano and a music box. Hmm. I don't have a piano or a music box in here. Watch your step, brother. It's actually colder. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a window open? Or? Yeah, so in the back of this building right here, yeah. unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, birds have a tendency to blow out our glass. This whole room back here, as you can see, it's tarped. I mean, everything, because birds have just literally blown out all the rooms in here. So we've tried the best we can to seal it, yeah. but it doesn't really, really work. Um, so we call this room Scotty's room. Now, Scotty was a former Washoe Club bartender who worked here from 1970 until 1982. And he lived in this room with his 16-year-old son. Well, in 1979, his son and his 14-year-old friend went three miles in that direction to play above Silver City. That's where you guys were just traveling through. It's right over there. Those kids, they were playing above Silver City in one of the hills, and they ran over one of them and fell into a 1,200-foot deep ventilation shaft for a mine. That's almost like a quarter of a mile straight down. It killed those kids instantly. Understandably, Scotty's pretty upset at the death of his son. I mean, what good parent wouldn't be? He was so upset that on June 2nd of 1982, he decided he could no longer live without his kid. He got off work downstairs at the bar, came up here to his bedroom, pulled a gun out, shot himself in the head. He ended his life, and that to me is absolutely heartbreaking. Scotty haunts this section of the building still, and he is a very active entity in this whole section of the building. Um, I was up here one night doing an investigation with some uh, people, and we were sitting right here on the floor with the ovulus, and we had a REM pod on that desk. And um, we were like, Scotty, if you're here, give us a sign. REM pod went crazy, my friends. It made multiple tones at the same time, and each one started to fluctuate through different pitch ranges at different speeds. I've personally never seen a REM pod do that before or after that ever happened. So we started going back and forth with each other. Have you seen one do that? No. Have you seen one do that? No. So you're like, this is probably a pretty strong manifestation to make this thing go off in a way we've never ever seen one go off. Then the ovulus said, depression, help me. And we were like, I think Scotty might be up here with us right now. And then a couple minutes later, it then said, after we're like, you know, hey, move something, touch something, say something else, it goes. The REM pod went off and it went, it was a hard, hard hit. 
then um, you know we started talking about because it was a I forget the name of their uh, YouTube channel. They were filming stuff too. So he started talking about, you know, suicide awareness, which is a real big thing. And and as he's talking, the ovulus thing goes 1200. And so we were, I stepped back and I was like, uh, depression helped me 1200. That sounds like something Scotty would say. He was depressed for the few years that followed after his son's death. He wanted help to get over that grief. He didn't receive any, so he committed suicide right here in his room because his son died in a 1200 foot deep ventilation shaft. That is, for me, the most solid interaction I've ever had with Scotty. Now, going back in time, because this room has been marked with a lot of tragedy. In the 1870s, on that side of our building, we had the Roos, uh, the Roos Brothers Clothing Store, and the back of that building was an apartment building. Living in one of those apartments was a Civil War Union general by the name of General Jacob Van Bocklin, and I actually have a portrait of him that I'll share with you guys. Well, during the war, he was an explosives expert. So it makes sense that um, when the war ended, he became an explosives expert for the local mining companies in the immediate area. But Jacob did not leave his explosives just at the mine site. He kept them stored in his bedroom. You don't do things like that with explosives, guys. He also rented out the room below his and stored explosives in that as well. Jacob also had a pet spider monkey. You don't mix monkeys and explosives. June 29th, 1873 at 11 o'clock at night, his monkey knocked over six cans of nitroglycerin, causing a chain reaction, setting off an additional 150 pounds of dynamite. The back of that building disappeared off the face of the earth. The monkey was actually vaporized. They found no remnants of that little thing. They discovered Jacob's body, almost completely blown through one of the brick walls in his bedroom. He was so mangled, the only way they identified him was because his name was engraved on his pocket watch and somehow it was still inside one of his pockets. 100 feet behind our building in that direction on B Street, a guy was just walking down the roadway. While an iron curtain shutter door, which are extremely, extremely heavy, was blown off that building, thrown through the air, and it actually hit and killed that gentleman. They say when it's your time to go, it is your time to go. He was hit and killed by a flying door. I feel bad for that man. In one of the Intermore apartments on that side of that building, you had a guy by the name of Charles Knox. Now he survived that explosion, but the roof actually collapsed on top of him, pinning him from the neck down under a lot of brick and timber. He was still alive. So the fire crews came in and they started removing that debris, but they ran back out because um, that explosion created a fire. The fire went into Charles's bedroom and burned him to death. Burned him so severely when they recovered his remains two days later, his legs were burned completely off of his torso. That's how intense that blaze was. In the room we're standing in, you had Ed and his eight-year-old daughter, Ella. They both died immediately in the blast as well. In total, 12 people were killed and it was due to the explosion, the overpressure, the concussive wave, and flying timbers and bricks, and over two dozen were injured. Ella, just like Scotty, haunts this section of the building. So as I mentioned a little bit ago, I do security stuff here for the Washoe Club. So I'm up here 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 at night, just consistently checking on the place every now and again. And it's common for me to hear a little girl laugh within this room or right outside of that doorway. And it is so loud and clear if I'm on the phone with someone, they can hear it. We also used to have a lot of toys up here. So if you look at old tour footage, I mean, five-ish months ago, you'll see there's stuffed animals that surround, I mean, the entirety of this room. There's toy balls, stuffed animals, you name it. It was up here. And it was common for me to come in through the building. I have a door that's back there that I can come in through and find toys that belonged within this room. Actually, down between the two staircases, I would find some down by the ballroom, some down by the crypt area. There were countless times where I'd take a toy ball and I would lock it inside of this cabinet. And uh, the way to do that is you can see it's kind of loose, but this thing, when it, it goes like that or whatever. So I'd take the ball, I'd stick it in here and I'd shut the door. And back in those months, this cabinet top was actually flipped around. So I'd do that and I'd go on my security check. I'd come back, the ball would be gone, the doors would still be shut. Wouldn't be able to find the ball the rest of that time. I'd walk through the whole building again. Where did my ball go? Then one time, about a week after it disappeared, it showed up, there's a green chair over there in that corner. And it actually showed up underneath that green chair. It was the trippiest thing I've ever experienced. We've had times where uh, I would be up here with some investigators and we would put a toy ball in the center of this room and we'd walk off, we'd come back, come around and the ball would be gone. So we'd cut the corner a little more because we're, you know, naturally, where'd the ball go? And it would usually be sitting right in this doorway threshold spinning. I mean, crazy. I actually have a picture of who we believe to be Ella as a manifestation. This one's actually pretty cool. So this was taken coming up the staircase and then shooting through this doorway. And right there looks like a little girl in old Victorian style clothing. You can see her face, like the jawline, her nose, the hair as it comes down. That's a cool capture. That is a fantastic capture. I have one more picture that someone got of her and sent to us. 
and it looks like she's actually raising her hand and is like pushing like a stroller or something. You can see it back there. Oh my god, that is crazy. There's nothing that has ever looked like that in this room because if I back out and go to similar age pictures from that time, as you can see that's my former coworker Carl, but there is nothing in this room that resembles a little girl with her hand raised or even manifesting as we can all see. Isn't that a trip? That is crazy. Now I've had people see shadow people from this doorway actually, um, looking this way across this hallway. It's common enough to see a shadow man walk back and forth through this. I have a picture of that that I'll share with you guys. So you can see him right oh there. Oh my God. Really? That's, that is nuts. Isn't that awesome? Oh my um, I've also had it very common for people to see a, either people walking down these stairs and if the dark thing is active, it doesn't walk, it crawls, which is, I mean, that just sounds like straight out of a Conjuring movie, but it does crawl. You can ask uh, other employees. I don't know if Kimmy's ever experienced it, but the older gentleman that was sitting at the bar, Craig, the one that we were laughing about earlier, my good buddy, he's, I believe, seen the thing crawl. I've had people say that they've seen it come out of this room when they're coming out this way, go up the wall and then down the stairwell, or they'll be going down up the, the stairs. Wall? Yeah, it goes up like a spider. What the f it goes down, or they've had it come up these stairs and it goes up on, it likes going up the walls. And it goes up the wall and it hooks that corner and then goes towards the ballroom. I'm in the ringing in my ear when right now. That's why I don't like talking about it yeah, in the building. Right now, my back feels just It's, something. so it scratches people. I've had it scratched. So if you guys at any point, um, like feel like the best way I could describe it was a bunch of like bee stings just went down my back. And I'll show you guys a, a, the picture of it. It's faint, so I don't know how well you guys will pick it up. But you can see it goes down and then horizontally across my, my back is when it got me good one time. And it does, it feels like bee stings is the best way I can describe it. Yeah, we've uh, both been yeah. scratched. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll go more into in depth about this thing though, like out front or out back of it. I just don't like talking about it in here. Just after it followed me home and stuff, enough enough is enough with that thing. Um, what, which room? We're, we'll go save the, that one for last, but it's Perfect. what we call the red room or room number 12. Yesterday, I had a guy see a figure, like he was coming right here and he got to like right about here and he's, the best way he described it was he saw an arm come around this like this and that poor kid, he screamed and almost went right down the stairs. Understandable, it, it's terrifying to anybody. I don't blame him at all. I did some stuff up here with the Travel Channel about three and a half months ago. I was telling you guys a little bit about that ago. And when we were filming up here, especially right through this hallway, we had so much interaction. The poor camera guy, and I won't say his name, but uh, he pretty much like buried his head in the small of my back and grabbed me and was just like, what is going on? Get me out of this place. We were hearing footsteps walk around in this room. Um, there's, and if you guys pan in here, you can see it. I have a bunch of wallpaper all stacked up because we're restoring this place, how it looked in 1862. So I've got a whole bunch of wallpaper all right here. And it sounded like these were getting knocked over. We would hear stuff like this going on in here as we're on the other side of the wall. And he said that he saw a person like poke their head out. We were done. He let, he went back downstairs for like three or four hours. The poor guy was terrified. So this is really, really active. I guess seeing people, figures and all that crazy stuff. Through this doorway, this is the old music room. Just, this is, has uh, Winifred and I don't like that. I'll, I'll go into that in a second. The way we know this is the music room is the roof is actually shaped like a grand piano and it has this curved wall. The reason this wall is curved is to actually help direct sound. So whatever you play in this room, speakers, Victrola, piano, pump organs, anything like that, your sound travels this flat wall, goes around this curve, and it's directed out of the doorway, deflects off that stairwell, and it goes left, right, and down. So you hear whatever's played in this throughout your, the entire building. Versus like your modern home, when you play music or your TV really loud in a room and you walk out, it's a lot quieter, right? It's because your sound waves deflect off the four corners and they go back to the center. Over 150 years ago, they knew how to properly direct sounds so you would hear it throughout the entire building. Extremely, extremely smart people. Now for the weird haunting stuff. With this being the music room, I have personally heard loud ragtime piano come blaring out of this thing. I don't have electricity up in the second or third story minus three exit signs and a power cable. So there's no 
speakers or like electronic pianos that'll play up here to make that kind of music happen. That right there, you might think is a piano. This is actually a pump organ. So the only way this will make sounds is if you pump these pedals while pressing the keys, and as you can see, it's broken. So the billows are broke, so this really won't make any sounds. So to hear old saloon music blare out of this, ridiculous. I mean, it is absolutely insane. And it's loud, and it's like three or four seconds long. It's the craziest thing. I've had people on my tours hear it. This right here is, we used to call our Annabelle. Oh, it's getting scared. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Okay. That was interesting. So right this, when you, yeah, right, right when you pointed at the doll. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't stand this name, this doll. To be honest with you. Um, so her name used to be Annabelle. That's what my coworker called her. Um, about four months ago, I was up here with some very good friends of mine, and we were doing a little spirit box thing in here, and we were like, "What is your name?" And the doll, or like this little girl voice, cuts through, and it goes, "Winifred." So her name is actually Winifred. She rocks by herself often enough. Yesterday she did it twice for people. So you might get it, uh, her to rock. Usually it's real subtle. So it's usually kind of stuff like this. The first time I saw her do that was about seven or eight months ago at about 2.15 in the morning. Came through here doing a security check, shined my flashlight in on her, and she was going like this. And I just sped walk past the room to be honest with you. I don't do the weird creepy doll thing. <laughs> there's this is not a, there's no gimmicky thing here and I'll just go like this so people there it's it's just an old chair as you can see there's nothing different right so there's no reason this thing should rock on its own ever she's from about the 1800s I have a cool picture that someone um, captured a, I want to say it was a last year of this doll and they captured whatever it is attached to it manifesting out of it oh. check that out so you can see it's coming up over the doll are out of it all. I mean, yeah. that is cool. And what's unique about this too is to get an effect like that, if you were in a dark space or something, you would have to like have a light source and you know, go like that as you're shooting. All of the laugh is perfectly aligned. So uh -huh. you can tell that they're not bouncing their phone around. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That wow. is a cool capture. A With that being said, we'll go this way and I'll introduce you into Lena, who is a pretty prominent entity here in this place. I'm gonna go around this hallway right here. This is another locked room right there just for storage antiques. I have not heard anything in that one yet. This half of the building, personally for me, I haven't really had much ever happen, so, but the next room we'll go to, yeah. Okay, now we were in this before, right? No. No, we're on the third floor. Oh, shit. This is a carbon copy split. Almost. It um, is, it is, it's a labyrinth up here. The feel of it, you know? Yeah, you and you're not the first person mm -hmm. I've ever had say that in stuff. So, in the mid 1880s, there was a lady of the night by the name of Lena who was actually murdered in this room. She was murdered by having her throat slit so severely when they found her, the poor girl was almost completely decapitated. Now we think Lena haunts this location still because they never found the man who took her life, so, they, uh, so she received no type of closure. And we think she was either murdered wearing blue or that was her favorite color. Because whenever she shows up on the first, second, or third floor of this building, people will report seeing a, a woman in a blue Victorian dress with a manifest manifestation in its entirety. The skin color, the transparency, the weird misty stuff has a blue hue to it. The picture I'll show you guys was taken I want to say about two and a half years ago in broad daylight from across the street looking back at this building and in the room right below this one looking out of the window is who we believe to be lena oh it's a woman in a blue victorian dress but she's see-through oh my gosh I'm just gonna yeah. she's see-through isn't that cool that is i had people see that yeah wow isn't that cool Earlier today, my second tour uh, today, I had right when I, it was just two people and I started talking to them and they go, it's funny you say that because as we were walking by, we looked up and we could see a woman and it looked like she was wearing blue and she was looking at, like at us out of the windows, but you guys were closed. And I was like, you probably saw her. When we get downstairs, I'll show you some pictures of her in the museum of her manifesting on the spiral staircase but I have a real cool picture in here that I'll show you guys when we get downstairs because that's where we captured it. I'm the only person in the building with that. It is mind boggling. I'm just like, like lit up, you know, right now. If you're feeling it. Yeah, just like if my clothes were off and my hairs would all be on end. Mm -hmm. right that's weird because my left ear just started to ring. And, and I've got a headache and my head is full. My voice has changed, <clears throat> you know, just being full. Yeah. So someone today saw Lena. I, I believe so. I believe it was who, who they saw and she was within I think she was 
I think she was down on the second story looking out, not the window that picture was taken, but the one next to it because she was closer to the E and the washout and that runs right here. Wow. That transom window did not used to be open. It actually swung full open during one of my tours a couple, uh, like about a month ago. So it was closed. When a transom window naturally, I guess, slips for whatever reason, it'll like slowly rotate, right? That's just the way the weight transfer goes. That, I was doing a tour um, and we were all talking and it went from full close to full open. I mean, huh. just just snapped. This thing is, so, and I'm six foot tall. So just as a gauge of height, so I'm, at, I'm 72 inches, six foot tall. I can't even like get it to even try and pull it closed. And we were all standing, I'll never forget it. I was right here talking to my people and right out of the corner of my eye, it just literally closed and just snapped full open. I mean, just fast, super fast. And if we do it, you wanna be slow. It's all from 1862, I don't wanna break the hinges off it. So that was a real cool experience that I had with that transom window actually. There is a mannequin sitting right here, don't let him scare you. This wallpaper is from 1862. Wow. And that, that shine that it has is a beautiful man. It's so pretty. Yeah. This stuff, and then we will go this way to the room that I just did, yeah. There's a guy sitting right here. Don't let him scare you. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's go. Oh. This is gigantic. Tell me if you feel a pressure shift in this one. I feel it. I feel like my, my stomach's like flipped. It, it feels weird. I don't, I don't like this room. So this is a cool example of wallpaper we put up. It's from Bradbury Company's 1875, uh, 76 archives. So this is kind of how our building's gonna look when we're all done. It's real, real cool. But the reason it's called the Red Room is while it's surrounded by red paint, but I won't talk about any of that stuff. This door right here, this is a, a key piece of thing right here. So this door is known to shut on its own and it gets shut so hard every now and again, it's actually breaking right here below that doorknob. That is an inch and three quarter thick solid wood door. It takes a lot of force to break wood that stout. And I can pull it off the wall and you can see how, how, how robust this door actually is. Now there's no reason this thing should be shutting on its own or slamming as hard as it does. The windows on that side of the room are completely shut. So um, there's no wind that comes through here as we can feel. It's raining outside, it's decently windy. There's no wind pulling through this thing. Um, if I stand next to it and I start stomping my foot, it doesn't move, right? So there's no wind pulling it closed. There's no vibration causing it to bounce and shut. And if I pull it off the wall and let gravity and the angle of our building, because everything in Virginia City is crooked, do its thing, this does not shut hard enough to damage an inch and three quarter thick solid wood door. As we can all see, right? That's not gonna cause it to split that way. What's interesting to note as well is the way it's breaking is very similar to if you were to kick a door on this side, the kinetic force travels through it and it starts to split on the other side of it. Kind of like if you uh, like shoot like a piece of wood or a can or something, the entry hole is smaller than the exit. Same thing applies to this, that force transfer causes it to go this way. So it's like something is kicking this thing shut. It gets slammed so hard every now and again, it sounds like a 12 gauge shotgun gets fired off up here in the building and we can hear it down at the bar. That is insane. I've had it happen during tours. My coworkers have experienced it. I've had it slam when I'm doing security checks up here by myself. I am not, not the biggest fan of that one. It scares me to half to death. It's, it's just scary. Um, Ghost Adventures, countless YouTube investigators, private, just fun paranormal people. They've all captured it on video shutting on its own. I mean, it's, it's insane. Now I was talking earlier about the, uh, uh, that common area that was on the other side of the ballroom. If you put your lights through this, you can actually look down into the common area. So that is the 50 foot drop, roughly. I don't have a light there, so. Check that out. Wow. It's colder in here than it is out there. Yeah, don't, don't send that. Now, um, we also know the entity likes this door shut because I have an EVP of it telling my former coworker to shut that door. And so you need to um, listen real carefully to hear it, but you hear my former coworker say a lady's voice now, then he pauses and then he goes back into his conversation. But within that momentary pause that he does, a low whisper cuts through and he goes, shut the door. So the shut happens within that pause and then the door comes as he starts talking again, but it's, you can hear it undercutting him. I'll play it twice for you guys. Listen to this, three, two, one. 
And uh, we were doing a EVP session, and we got to go into a lady's voice now, and she says... I'll play it one more time. A EVP session, and we got to go into a lady's voice now, and she says... Isn't that cool? That's clear. I've had a lot of people get EVPs in this section of the building from full-blown conversations to laughing, crying, screaming, growling, cursing, all that stuff. Remember I said there's a dark thing in here um, that I just want to, I don't, I won't talk about it in this room. A cool video clip that I'll play for you guys. Um, so I saw you had a REM pod with your equipment. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of interactions with those. One night we had one sitting in this doorway and we had one in that far doorway. This one would start getting like a real soft tone. So like something was getting close to it. And we were like, hey, come in here. You know, you can come in here. And then all of a sudden you would hear like faint footsteps go that way. And then that one would start going off super, super, super hard. Then it would stop and it would just kept like something was going like this between the two. So one of my buddies, we were standing, I mean, probably right about here. And he was taking pictures towards the REM pod. And in, I'll play the video for you. In the first picture, there's nothing above it. Goes to the second one, huge orb streak, REM pods going off in the background. And you can hear it's a real strong hit. And uh, I'm like, hey, if that's you, can you stop making that go off for a second? Off on command. And we start cracking up, you know, whoa, it's intelligent. As soon as I say thank you, it kicks right back on. I love sharing this video with people because wow. it's, just, it's just awesome interaction. All right, cool. So I'll go like this. So this is looking down towards that uh, threshold. That's where the REM pod's sitting. And so there's nothing above it. First one, second one. Huge orb streak. That's bad. And listen to this. That's going back off. What the fuck? Wow. If that's you, can you stop making that go off for a second? I love how it's just like. Thank you. It's intelligent, man. And that's a strong hit. That yeah. is very, very solid. So you can get a lot of interaction with that. That being said, let's get out behind the building and then I'll talk about the thing that harbors this room. And I'm, I'm just gonna Don't say before we leave here, for reference, this room right here, this is where you would say the darkest yeah. energy is. Yeah, there, there's a very dark entity that is not human inside of that room. 100%, 100%, it's, Put it this way, when it attacks people, it's three scratches. When it knocks, it's three knocks. When it's active, you smell sulfuric smells or a very weird, uh, like a chemical cleaning kind of nasty smell, and then it'll turn into a sulfuric smell, um, stuff like that. It's 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 not good. It makes you feel sick and just, I, I feel yeah. kind of sick now. I'm an optometrist, okay. <laughs> science, is, yeah. so I'm definitely a skeptic, but yeah. I'm also kind of an empath, if you will, for many, many years. That's a good combination. Yeah, right. I like but I can just, mm -hmm. my ears have been ringing, I haven't been saying anything, and clogged like my whole yeah. sinuses, and then this is really heavy. Like my back even right now, I feel like something doesn't that, That's a dark room. So we should go this way? We'll go this or, way. We'll look okay. right around here. Because I want to talk about this thing. This place, like I said, is a complete laboratory. <laughs> That's what I feel. What was that? Well, I, I, it's almost like you feel like you need to have someone like you with us. Just a, a, kind of like a little fear, kind of. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, That's like, good, though. That's good for the investigation. No, <laughs> fear. Well, and that's yeah and it's it's so funny i've had people invite me up on their little investigation so i pop up with them for an hour or two and they won't have much and then i'm like all right let's see if we can kick it off hey guys you know it's me do this do that if you're here and like seven out of ten times i'll usually get a pretty good response out of it hmm. and then i'm like cool there you go i'm going back to bed <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's just weird and also take note of smells as you go through the place oh, too yeah. And be careful back here, it's super, super rickety and cooking. I've had people literally lock themselves out of the building. And I don't want you guys to get hurt back here. I'll rebuild these one of these days. <laughs> one day. One day. So yeah, I'll talk about the thing inside so your equipment is getting wet and stuff, but at least we're somewhat away. So the dark thing upstairs, um, I don't like talking about it in the building, but since we're away from where it harbors at, usually, we should be okay. I have had it get active down here too. Like I said, if it's active, it's active. So I don't really know when it came about how long ago. I was told that people went up there to do an overnight investigation and um, 
they uh, did like a pentagram, I think they're called on the floor, and did like a seance or something. So they summoned this thing, opened a portal, and then uh, oh, that word got out. And then I guess other overnights came in with Ouija boards and they never closed it out. It scared them so bad they ran out. We had that quite a few times. And I guess with the, they did like a sacrifice with the pentagram thingamajig. And I'm not trying to associate something with something. That's just what I've been told is that they killed, I think it was a crow. They had a dead crow in the center of this, this symbol. And then dark stuff started happening. People were getting attacked, you know, sick, all this crazy stuff. My personal interactions with it, my girlfriend is an empath. Uh, we went up to the third floor, and like you said, she started feeling really, really, really sick. And then she blacked out. I mean, just like a sack of potatoes almost just dropped to the floor. So I grabbed her, brought her all the way down. We sat in the saloon. She had no recollection of even coming down. She was like, what am I doing down here? I was just upstairs, what happened? I had people go up in that room, start getting either really dizzy, bloody noses, the weirdest one was my buddy brought his four-year-old kid up there. We came down to the bar, and the kid had three scratch marks down both his arms, his legs, his stomach, and his back. And we were like, hey, buddy, who did this to you? And he goes, oh, Gengar upstairs did. Well, if you don't know who Gengar is, it's a demonic Pokemon. So to have this little kid correlate being scratched by a demonic Pokemon to that room, that's, that's not okay. Um, I have a video that actually shows what this thing looks like. So I'll turn my brightness up so it quits like auto dimming on us. And this is the thing that crawls. Yeah, it is the thing that crawls. It's weird, man. Um, and it does, you, you will hear three knocks, like I said. That's the really prominent one. Um, I don't know if you guys have like spirit boxes in. Uh, so I've interacted with it and it's just very, very angry sounding. That's how you know if you're dealing with it. It's like this low, like just rrr, kind of voice or it'll growl at you. So this is what it looks like. This was captured a few years ago. Cool, so I'm gonna zoom in right here. So I'm not too sure how well your cameras can like pick up the brightness of my phone. So there's a face right there on the right and I'll make it clear. So it focuses on that face, it goes right there. You guys see that face? That's pretty clear. And um, so like I said, when we were upstairs, that's that 50 foot drop. You cannot stand and look back in that glass. There is absolutely no way, unless they're floating, but people don't normally float. Um, so it loses focus on that face right there, comes back in, and if you watch right in this region, you'll see something start manifesting, and the whole thing shifts. It turns red, it raises what looks like a three-clawed webbed hand, and it opens its mouth. Yeah. Let me zoom in before he does this. So remember, watch right in front of my thumbnail. Okay. So I'm going as slow as I can so you can see it take shape right there. It's starting to manifest something, as you can see it come out of nowhere. Oh. Turns into that, just shifted color. Oh my God. And now that is a three clawed webbed hand. You can see the webbing, the claws, its mouth is open, and it turns oh my red. Oh God, look at that. Thing. So I'll go back and I'll, I'll just do it a little That's bit insane. quicker. So there's that face right there. Yeah. Goes like this, and three, two, one. Boom. Oh. Turns into that. <laughs> some scratch examples, and I'll show you guys some cool scratch examples. This is one of them. That occurred. Um, this is one of them right here. There's that. And I had somebody tell me that is ancient symbolism almost for like the word hell or something like that. So three scratches that. And that actually happened on my tour in front of me. That is my former roommate's uncle. His back was against the wall and he jumped off and was like, dude, what? Lifted his shirt. That's what we saw behind him. And then I also have another one right here. So you can get stuff like that. Just, just crazy. So, as you guys already know, just be careful if you guys try to interact with that thing. Now, Lena, the, the lady that I talked about upstairs in blue, this is where she manifests herself. So if we go around this wall, I can show you that spiral staircase. It's really, really, really cool. So we have, and I'm gonna close this so you can better hear me. Thank you. So you're welcome. So this right here, this is one of two freestanding spiral staircases left in the entire world. What we mean by freestanding is that it's actually attached right here at this part, and it's also attached above us, but there's nothing that supports it in the middle. So it is literally floating. So if you look right up there where the wood kind of notches into the wall, all the way down through here to this section, it is literally free floating. There's nothing suspending this thing. When it was originally built, it was built without nails or screws. It was built using wooden dowels. This thing was built, like I said, 1875, 76. But that is why it is capped off and roped off because you can see the wood backing coming apart. It's separating off my wall. And if I go like this, watch the handrail. Super unsafe. Oh, so you cannot go up it anymore because if you go up it, you fall through it and then you become the next 
latest and greatest tourist attraction at the Washa Club. You don't want that happening. Lena, the lady in blue, this is where she manifests all of the time. So if we go in the museum, I'll show you two old photographs of her, and then I'll show you a picture that um, we captured, I want to say in June or July. So this right image is the most common way that Lena will manifest herself. So there's this blue coloration right here, as we can see, and it goes across this entire image all the way up to this. People capture this on the low end three to four times a week. Super, super common. But it has that blue coloration, blue dress, we think that's her color. This is her as a full body manifestation coming down the stairs at us. So you can see it has a bluish hue and I'll turn my light on, it's slightly dim so it might help amplify it a little bit. So it has that bluish hue to it as we can see. This is her hair. This is what appears to be the collar to a Victorian dress. You can kind of see the ruffled look of it. Right here, this is what we think might be a four leaf clover necklace. That's where it'd be attached to a necklace chain. This is her waistline right here. Her hips come right through this. You can see the outline of her, her figure. The right hip line is faint, but you can kind of see a slight discoloration right through this. The dress fabric is draping down right here, and that is her foot. One, two, three, four, five toes, and you can see the tendons to each one. That is a fantastic capture. Wow. But the coolest one that we cap had captured, um, and I'll actually look at the photo details so I can tell you exactly when this was. This was on June 20th of this year. So the picture was a picture of the mirror right by the spiral staircase. There's something in the bottom left of this image. So if I enlarge that and go right here, you can see it has blue coloration, an eye socket, there's individual strands of hair, and um, this is the facial structure. My coworkers and I spent over two hours trying to debunk this and we could not make it happen. We could not make it happen. And here, in case you want to get a little that bit of that like, too. That looks so cool. Creepy. So let's go inside the crypt, guys. So this is the crypt, my friends. This is where they had 77 bodies stacked in 1874. Now the way they'd get the dead in here is they would wheel them through the front of this building on a wooden gurney and start stacking them up. Originally, before the bodies happened, this was a perishable storage area. So when that body pile became too tall, that platform right there that you guys looked off of earlier, they would take the bodies up there and drop them from that to keep the pile rising. <laughs> that's morbid and that's kind of sad. Now they had to do that by candlelight for many years. If you drop a body too quick, it's gonna turn off the, uh, or blow your candles out, causing it to go dark. And I'll just flick this off real quick. It becomes pitch black in here. Um, there you go. Pitch black, as you guys can see. Um, I'll flick these on too. Now, um, I've had a lot of weird interactions in here. So Scotty's room, you guys remember that? The room where the gentleman killed himself in 82? That wooden ceiling way above us, that is the floor to Scotty's room, and that is how high up in this building we actually just were a little bit ago. This place is a lot bigger than it looks. I've heard heavy boots walk around in Scotty's room. Um, I've had rocks thrown at me in here. I've had people on tours actually validate that. Um, I've personally heard that there's a woman who screams like she is being murdered down here. It's, I don't like when I hear it. It'd be cool if you guys can capture it, but on the flip side, it's terrifying. Usually I hear it when we're locking down the building, I come back here to make sure we're not locking anybody back here. And right before I hit the white double doors by where that spiral staircase is, you will hear a woman back here just, just shrieking. <laughs> and I was just in here. I know nobody's back here. It, I cannot stand when that one happens. I've had people come back here and get their clothing pulled. They've been grabbed. I've had someone have their clothing to torn or their hair gets pulled. So they leave. Um, the other day, the building got really heavy and me and my coworker came back here because we kept hearing something. So we came back here to do like a mini like a, a EVP session and stuff. And I could feel like all of a sudden the pressure and the um, temperature shifted. And it felt like somebody was up against me, like pushing into me. So that was real interesting. I've had K2 meters sitting on this platform thing just start spiking like crazy. And I've even had people take pictures up towards that platform and uh, capture a thing is the best way I can describe this, looking down at them. And I'll show you an example of that. I actually have a picture of sad, weird entity looking down at them. Check that thing out, guys. Oh. oh. What the hell? I'm not seeing it. Where is it? It's sitting like right up in here. Oh, that little? Yeah. Oh, see the eye sockets in it? Almost like the weird like high like cheekbones or something. Hell? Isn't that creepy? I've even had people, um, while they've been down here doing their investigations, they will hear stuff walking back there. They'll hear voices and things like that. And like for you guys doing your investigation upstairs, you know you're the only people in that section of the building. There's nobody that's gonna be up there with you. 
So it, it's real trippy when that one happens. Other than that, that pretty much is the entire Washoe Club as I know it personally. This, wow. is, this is a cool place. Thank you, man. No, of course, Dude. guys. Wow. Of course. Okay, everybody, so we're here now at the Washoe Club. It's just Jeff and I. The entire building has been cleared out. Nobody else is here with us. Like we've been showing you, this entire complex is completely empty. Step with me now into the ballroom. If you'll remember, this is where the little girl who they call Gretchen died. Um, this is a hot spot of paranormal activity. Just to give you a rundown of what we're gonna do, we're gonna start out in here, we're gonna do a call out or a seance. Then after investigating this floor, Jeff and I are gonna move up to the third floor um, and try to contact the spirit of the man who took his own life, the two, the parent and child who were blown up in the explosion. I know a lot of y'all don't like, uh, like when we do this stuff, but we're gonna try conjure the demon, the darkness, and see if it'll come out and talk to us. Now, I'll just tell you guys off camera, while Jeff and I have been up here setting stuff up, we heard a very, very loud bang from upstairs, almost like someone was walking around. Once again, it's confirmed that no one is here in the building with us all day when we've been in here. It's like, there's somebody here. And I don't think we got Justin to talk about this on camera, but, all of the employees here at the Washoe Club who work here have told us that in the last few days, all the activity has been spiking because... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, um, but they've been telling us that all the activity is spiking because they just put up the holiday decorations. It's currently December 5th right now, 2021. All of that, that extra electricity and the lighting and everything seems to be spiking the paranormal activity. They also told us that the demon thing, the darkness has been more apparent lately. People have been scratched and attacked more frequently in this building. So we're gonna try our best tonight to get that uh, that evil piece of shit to come out wherever they are in the building. So, yeah, let me get Jeff. How are you feeling? Well, um, it's late for one thing. Um, cold, but it's like massive. This place is much bigger than I thought it was. Uh, the demon, uh, we're talking more about that. I think, Colin, you're becoming a little more open. Uh, the idea that those do exist, and I, I've always thought they do. That, that's creepy to me, crawling on the ceiling, as Justin was saying in the inter interview. Um, the ballroom, uh, you know, lots of activity here. Um, the pool, the, the room where they played cards, there's some noise going on over there, and there's a place, uh, I think a man hung himself over here, if I remember right. There's so much history of this place, uh, including murder, suicide, uh, dying in an explosion, uh, a father and his daughter. I don't know what we're gonna find, but there's definitely a lot of heaviness. I think we're gonna find stuff here tonight. Well, let's get started. I'm ready. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so Jeff's getting a static camera set up, but we're literally hearing like yeah. loud knocking from over here. There, right there. That doorway they've caught that apparition, so that doorway. Oh. What was that? very eerie in here, <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> there it is again. <gasps> well, that was not just happening 20 seconds ago. It wasn't. What is that? I, don't, I can't tell. I can't tell if it's like the window or Are you here? Okay, we'll be right back, guys. Just a quick shout out, y'all. I wanna make sure that... <laughs> Just a quick shout out. I wanna make sure that if you're not subscribed, guys, be sure to click the subscribe button and turn the notifications on. Oh my God, what are you doing? 
make sure to click the subscribe button and turn your notifications on. That is very important so you get notified when we release a new video. Um, like the video, comment below right now. If you're watching this, I'm talking to you, Colin Brown, to you the viewer on the other side of the screen. Go comment what you think is about to happen to Jeff and I in this video. I wanna see what your guys' predictions are, especially if you're watching the live premiere. Um, I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds to go comment. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, better hurry. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, hopefully you commented because that helps drive the interaction, helps more people see the videos, uh, helps us make more videos. And uh, at the end of the day, if you wanna help support the channel, you can pick up some of the merch that we're selling. The link is in the description of this video. Or you can become a patron where we're posting bonus content. We posted stuff from the Washoe Club tonight on the Patreon, so uh, you can see our investigations a month, two months in advance. But yeah, y'all, we're, uh, we're gonna go set up the static cameras and uh, I thought I saw a shadow over there in that light. Okay, yeah, we're gonna set up the static cameras. Okay, explain what's happening. We just took a brief break. Okay, I'm trying to get a static camera set up. All these are charged fully. Yeah, we charged them all but last night. The uh, both the GoPro, the they're they're they're, they're completely dead. Both static cameras. <laughs> That's weird. Let's see. I've never. Oh, oh, damn, gee, this thing's been falling off like crazy. It's like they don't they don't want us to film. I'm not even kidding you. I have not had this. this I, I mean, I've never, you are not the type of person to not charge stuff. And you were charging these all night last night. Dude, both of them. Look at, maybe this will come on. What the hell? They're fucking dead, dude. Now that is trippy. They're completely dead. Both? Two. We had both of them last night. I mean, you'd think that even one of them would turn on for like half a second and then die. Because we didn't even use both of them last night, you know? We just used one of them. What the hell, man? To start all this out, we're gonna do the usual. And we're just gonna walk around this floor and, uh... If you haven't seen this device before, this is basically a K2 meter or an EMF detector based on EM levels in the environment which spirits are said to give off. This thing will light up different colors. That ball just flickered. Really? Yeah. Oh, I just saw something move over here. All right. What's up, everybody? My name is Colin Brown. I'm Jeff Brown. And tonight, we're here to talk to you. Anybody who's here in the Washoe Club, Gretchen. Scotty. Scotty. The Demon. Eddie, Ellie. Eddie or Ellie. Anybody who's in here, if you're upstairs up there, or if you're here on this floor, maybe in the library, the music room, if you're attached to the doll, I want you to follow, follow the sound of my voice. Follow us over here into the ballroom. Gretchen, if you're here with us, we would love to make contact with you. You can come touch any of the lights that we have set up here. But we came a long way from Texas and South Dakota to see you guys. Let's just sit here for a second. Oh, oh, okay. They're coming. Thanks for coming in. Can you give us another sign? Do you have a little D back? Yeah.
Come on in. You're welcome to come in. Anybody that's here. Good or evil. Let's just sit down here. Yeah. You're going to go with lights out or? Are you coming in? Okay, so what's interesting about that is on camera too, I just swapped out that battery to make sure that it's all fresh, you know? That was a new battery, but still, just in case, I just swapped it out. And look at it. Are you over there by the, the hallway? Turn on the ovulus now. I think they're just whoever's here. They're like, who are these people? Who are these people? Famous? Hmm. Yeah, sort of. Oh, the K2 is going off here. You making this meter go off in front of me? Go ahead and keep doing it. Keep coming in. Is this come in. in? Come in. What? The handle. Can you make a noise? Maybe knock on something and let us know where you are? Where are you in the building? There's a lot of things set up for you to, to experiment with. You can move any balls. You can touch these lights. We're here to talk to you. Can you go like this? Are you over near the poker table, the card? No, I think that's, again, this is the activity that at least has been happening here. You had set this meter off in front of me off. Come over and touch this meter down here. Show me you're here. Oh, I got a ring in my ear, right side. Can you come into the room? Come on, walk over here. What? Souls. Is this a thing that crawls? Playing cards at the table? Oh, oh, oh Jesus, look at that. That's the table. Dude, right there. That's dude, the dude, table. Dude. Okay, I got it. Oh, there's a there's a knock. Keep coming. Is this the shadow man? Dude, it's standing right there. I'm charged. Oh my god, dude. It's fucking right there. Oh, oh, what the... Damn, that was like a loud... I'm... Show yourself on camera here. Let me take a little picture. 
Yeah, do, do, do. That's been silent this whole time. Show us another sign over there. Play with those lights. Dude, I feel kind of surrounded here a little bit. Me too. What's your name? What is your name? Dude, this is insane. Wow. Are there more than one of you here? Are you by the card table? Can you move one of the chairs so that we can come sit? God, that's crazy. That was zeroed out, doing nothing. Come on in. Come in. Yeah. You're welcome to come in. No, I think this thing's telling us come over to the card table. Okay, I know, you know? but it's over here too. Okay, let's go to the card table. What do you think? Yeah. What do you want to bring? God, that's a heavy energy right there, man. Okay. God, that thing's going crazy. It, has, it literally hasn't stopped. I've never seen it do this. I'm gonna zoom, on it, zoom in on this dude and show people the music box, how it works. So yeah. that is pointing in the direction of the foot of the coffin towards the poker table over there. Are you trying to get us to come over here? Did you hear a whistle just now? I did. I did. I heard her. Isn't this the exact room where he said the whistle? I, it might be. Come over here, come on. Dude, what is happening? Look at, okay, the mirror's right here too. Dude, there. there's a ball. All right, so this is the table where Ulysses S. Grant, tons of famous people have come, Thomas Edison, they've all played cards here. And this is one of the hot spots of the building, which is ironically where it just led us by total chance. So here's the Oculus. Grandfather, grandfather casket. Grandfather casket. It's kind of there's a casket downstairs. is pointing in the direction of the foot of the coffin. Grandfather casket? Grandfather casket. What does it say? Oh, Maze. The, 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 uh, K2. What's going on? Oh, oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you here to play games with us? Who's here with us? Edison entered! Thomas Edison, are you here? Look at this. People like Thomas Edison. So sitting here back then, you would have seen President Grant playing cards with Thomas Edison. Tons of famous people have come. Thomas Edison, they've all played cards here. Edison. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! I just said dude, Thomas Edison! Dude, dude, I just I gotta... What the f Edison entered. Thomas Edison entered? Dude, that is Freaky dude. That is right when I said I've Thomas Edison. I never heard Edison out of that. And you? I just said Thomas Edison you? ten I seconds know, ago. I know. I know. I know. How? That is unbelievably strange. We would have brought some cards to play poker with you guys. Thomas Edison, if you're here, who else is here? Here, let's play with this flashlight. If this is Thomas Edison, or maybe you you were here when Thomas Edison was here. Edison entered. I think we got to get that one more time here. Edison entered. It's like a maze for sure around here. This building is like a labyrinth. 
It's like a maze for sure around here. Conditions. Okay. Certain. Conditions certain. If you want to talk to us, you know Thomas Edison, you know he invented the light Gosh. bulb. Nighttime. Temperature, nighttime quilt sentence. What the heck? If you were here when Thomas Edison was here, it's night. It is nighttime now. We have a flashlight. So we have a flashlight right here. Can you move a little to the right of that and touch the flashlight? Just to show us that you're here, so we can talk. Something's coming in right now. Can you touch the flashlight right here? Okay, we're here at the poker table. You guys used to play for days. Edison entered. Is there anybody else that's entered? If so, set off some of these devices or say your name on that device. Oh, look at me see the Are you filming? Okay, gotta film, man. Oh, I was just giving my hot sugar. It's like the first time the K2 went all the way up. Can you show us a sign that you're here? Oh, there. Oh, look at the oh. Cloister. Cloister? Worry? Thank oh. you. Map oh man, I'm charged. That was nuts. Thank Both you. The K2 and the REM pod went off. Okay, the By the way, guys, to remind you, we're sitting in the pitch black. This is what we see. I can't even see Jeff right here. Okay, once again, the, the, the obelisk is going all the way to red. It wants, wants to say something or something wants to say something through it. Tell us who you are. Are you here again? Enter with Thomas Edison if you're here. You're playing cards. Again, we're going to play cards. Poker, I'm ready to take your money. You want to sit down and play some cards? Show me. I've got $100,000 to spend. Do you want my money? Are you a human? File. File. Always. Always. Wherever you are here in the Washoe Club, can you please walk over towards us? It's just my dad and I right here. Can you walk over to us and use your voice? Just say something? It's like a cigar smell. You're smelling cigar? Like really congested. Mend. Mend. Okay, who are you? It's a weird feeling. My ears are just like, I'm kind of like disoriented a little bit. Are you good or evil? Character. Why is he in character? Yeah. Again, are you good or are you evil? Because we know both is here. Come into the room. Let's play some cards. The original table. The original table. It's amazing that they, you can touch it and stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. This so, would be in a museum. Yeah, honestly. Clear. 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 
Okay, so earlier you said Edison. Thomas Edison used to play cards right here. Did you know Thomas Edison? Can you say that name again? Bush. It's George Bush. W used to play here. What do you mean when you say Bush? I feel like it just left. Yeah, I'm trying to understand what I'm feeling like. I still smell like a stale cigar. Do you want me to touch this? Hold this and then you can go through me and communicate with me with this device? I smell something weird all of a sudden. The, this keeps going all the way to red. It's trying to say something. Did you used to smoke cigars? And... <laughs> Did you like cigars? You hear a voice? Yeah, yeah that one. Very loud voice. Can you use your voice again and talk to us? Okay, yep, keep going. What are you trying to tell us? Do you want us to just look with our eyes and not use the camera? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I'm feeling charged again now. I don't know why. Come and sit down. We've come a long ways to see you guys or women. Let us know you're here. There's all these devices in front of you that you can you can play with to make the lights. Go. Yep, you can play with the music box. There you go. Okay. Come on over. Yeah, come and sit down. You're crossing in front of that to get to these? That's fine. Where where are you in the room? Can you come in again? Yeah, have a seat. Do you want to play some poker? It's obvious that someone is here with us. I just don't know who. The Edison was really weird. A very strange confirmation of exactly what I just said on the device. So at this point, I guess we're just gonna try to figure out who's here and, and where they are. Are you standing right in front of us? was very faint, but I heard it's a it. woman's voice. Yeah. That came from above us. So. Are you on the third floor?
If you're over there in that corner, can you move that chair? Just move it a little bit, pull on it. If you can move it forward a little bit, we'll get out of here. What's your name? Say your name into this box right here. It will pick up your name if you say it into there. Please. That's just weird. Can you do something else for us? We're going to leave this room soon. If you want to talk with us, you got to give us something. Dude, look at that. Blue, too. That's not enough, though. If you want us to stay here, you need to give us something physical. You need to move a chair, you need to stomp on the floor, you need to bang on something, or else we're gonna start moving on to different rooms in here. Can you give us anything else? No, not that. I need something like this. Can you tell us your name? Okay, last chance, we're gonna leave this room. Anything? That's all? Oh my god. My light just dies. <laughs> okay, well the light just died right while this thing is going dead, off. Dead? Yeah. That's freaky. And this thing is going berserk. Completely dead, guys. Look at Alice. Reveal what? I mean, why is this thing going off like that? I don't know. I was not doing this last night. Who's making this go this go off? This music box? Because it's it, it, you're sitting in this chair right here. What's your name? Play with these other lights. Show us you're here. Give us some proof. Other than this. I think we should move rooms. Okay. Oh, there look at the moment I stood up to leave. And Nana, it said Nana. Lady. Nana, lady? Lady. Is it, who, who's the woman? Lena. Nana, Lena? Lena? That's half of Lena's kind name, of. Nana. Lena, are you here? Do you, do you like it here? Okay, we're leaving this room. Feel free to follow us. Several walk. Walk? Walk. Walk right when we started to walk. That's really weird, isn't that? Mm -hmm. The moment we started to walk. Okay, here we go. You know? Do you want to grab? Gretchen. Feeling screwed. 
All right, y'all, so it hasn't been as active as we thought it would be down here on the second floor, so we're gonna just go right ahead up to the third floor where the demon thing is, where multiple murders happened, where somebody took their own life, and that's supposed to be the most active part of the Washoe Club. Um, we haven't been up there at night yet, so. We got all of our equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do this. Okay, let's go. If you're up here, we're coming up. It's like throwing energy shit. Yeah. Where should we go first? The demon room? Whoa, there's a lot more energy up here. This might be where we're supposed to be. That dolly doesn't like it. Right? No? No. Ah! Jesus. Jesus! What's happening? This doll! This f***ing, these f***ing things! Dude, here's where the room splits. What? Here's the demon room. I'm a little freaked out here, man. This is like heavier energy here. Okay. The red room. This is where that thing that crawls on the walls lives. Okay. Hey, you want to explain this new equipment we've got? Sure. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, listen to some people online and looking it up. Um, we're talking about using the spirit box so it's not so annoying with the background noise. So I got what's called a a sound gate, um, a sound gate like using the guitar. You see it, the sound industry. This little guy here, and it's battery operated on the top. Got a couple ports. One goes to a speaker, and one goes to the spirit box. So we're we're going to turn off the bypass here, okay? And we're going to go ahead and and turn this on. And what will happen after we turn the speaker on? Going heavy up here. This will will set the sensitivity, so we'll eventually hear the sweeping sound. See, and we'll get so it's not so loud now, right? And we're hopefully going to hear the. Yeah, we're turning the lights out now, guys. Let's see if we can go more. <coughs> yeah, but you can't hear it as well. Okay, tell us your name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, this is what creepy right here. What are you sorry? What are you sorry about? Can you tell us what you're sorry about? I didn't tell. Are you an evil spirit? No. Where are you in this building? Tell us again your name. Who's here with us? You with Karen. I'm here with Karen. Oh. Yeah, I'm here with Carol. He was killed. Hmm. I think it was said he was killed myself, but one of you that died, can you say your name that we know your name? We talked about it with Justin tonight. Justin. Colin, do you want to ask? Yeah. Why aren't you talking to us? Why is it so hard to get you to say something to us? Can you tell us one of our names? Can one of you that is here tell us your name? I feel something right here. Very strong. Right in this corner. 
Wow. Are you right here next to me? Tell me again, are you standing right here? Is this you right here? Do you want us to come somewhere else in the building? It's weird because I have like a lot of feeling. Like my body is tingling, I'm numb, I don't feel well, but nothing's happening. I know. I'm trying to understand why. I'm the same way, like I feel somebody yeah. literally right here, but it's like, what? Are you not responding to us? Purposely not responding to us? Genuinely, we're feeling like a lot but nothing is getting picked up on our devices, which is really odd. I guess, let's just turn that off for a second. I'm gonna run a voice recorder. Okay, then we're gonna move out of this room. I'm gonna put the voice recorder over here. Whoever's up here, could you walk over to our voice? Lena, Scotty, anybody? Eddie, Allie? Who's the first time? Yeah, yeah. Gretchen? Can you make a noise and just let us know where you are in here? If this is a scary part of the the, the whole place for you. We're here to protect you that, and, and you're, we're friendly. Can you make that light with the lantern go off for us? Just let us know you're here. Or if you are the evil one, if you're actually a demon, show us that you can close that door. We're gonna try to listen for your voice now. Can you tell us your name? Can you tell us if you want us to stay or to go? It's like incredibly still in here, you know? It's like there's a lockdown. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the whole place. It's like I'm kind of like I'm the boss and no one says anything. Why? Is there something evil here? Why are you refusing to come out and talk to us? What's the reason? Is there, is there any reason why you don't want to come talk? Sacrifice, Sacrifice bones. Deal? Sacrifice bones deal? Made yeah, a deal that's to devil? Good, yeah, exactly. Remember he said they sacrificed a... Oh yeah, raisin? he sacrificed a crow. Oh, oh, a crow. Oh, oh. oh. Damn. They did it on a Ouija board right here. Yeah. They sacrificed a crow. A dead crow they brought in here, actually. Respawned from a sacrifice? Sacrifice deal. What do you mean by that? I'll do the Estes again, or I'm just kind of quietly talking to the camera. Okay. Okay. That's great. Oh, Jesus! Oh my God, dude! What the f that guy. Every time. Oh Jesus! What? What? Man? What? The floorboard creeped behind me. The tree. That's good.
Where'd you go, man? Oh, yeah. If you're the doll, if you're attached to this doll, can you rock that rocking chair really hard for us, please? Can you push that chair back and forth, please? I would really love to see you do it. So this is the room where Scotty, the disgruntled father, took his own life. Also a room where a father and daughter, parent and, and daughter, lost their lives in a tragic explosion. It's supposed to be one of the most active rooms up here. I'm going to turn this REM pod on. And since they were talking about how the ovulus always gives such great results in here, I'm going to turn the ovulus on. Scotty, are you in here? What do you mean by triangle, Scotty? Or whoever's in here? Once again, like, people in the are a lot of tolerance. Is something stopping you from talking? You're allowed to kind of play with this device here. Allie, if you're here, this is like a toy. You can kind of put your hand on it and just see how fun the lights are. Closet. Solstice. Closet. Solstice. Got a closet over here. Can you, can you open up the closet door for us? doesn't want to talk to us. I have no idea. Usually we have such relevant communication. This is just, even this thing, it's like, like the temperature is just going off. That's it. Okay guys, so we're upstairs. I'm gonna do the Estes method like you guys know and you've seen on the channel. Blindfold, noise canceling headphones, spirit box. I'm gonna read out what I'm hearing. Jeff's gonna ask questions. I can't hear the questions. Hopefully we can get something because honestly, guys, um, I know it's somewhat disappointing to hear. We've had some very intelligent activity, but that was all kind of at the very beginning in the downstairs. And so far, I don't really even feel that much energy in here specifically. So maybe by trying to communicate in this way, we can talk to Scotty or whoever else is here. Great Greg. All right. He'll never see me. How did you die? 200. Can you tell me how you died? Safely. Yeah. Trying to get all of them. Tim. Okay, who's Tim? It won't let me. Who's Tim? No one. Gotta go. Oh, you haven't been around. Thought you were quick, didn't you? Yeah, you can't go that. You, you just haven't heard him talk to us at all. Why are you not talking to us? I'm from here. I'm, I trained him. You can say who it is. I 
I like can barely hear anything. Just a connection. Girl. Who's the girl? Are you another entity that's here with us? Let me introduce you to him. Oh. How are you going to introduce him to me? In the bedroom. Well, we did have one of the people that's come up last night, which is a demon. Sound. The doctor can see you. Lost my mind. The f ah, 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 no, no, it's me, dude. dude. It's me. Come oh on, I had, to I had to grab this. Oh, jeez. It's talking. Beckon. Joe is trapped. Joe trapped Beckon. Sorry. Jeez. I can't believe it's just a loud thump out of nowhere when I'm actually like really deep in this. Puncture. Medication. Once again. Who's got you trapped? Cauliflower? Hmm. Upper floor? Are you good or evil? Can you tell us if you're good or evil? Switch. Nighttime. Bedtime? I'll just say bedtime. Other room? Can you name a type of flower? Just to see if it gels. Joseph. This did say Joseph before. But... Hmm. My car. How about a type of flower? Roses. Oh my god. My god. Type of flower. Products. Roses. Do you feel sick at all? I just came. Okay. Okay. Let's tell us your name again. Army. Thirteen. Come. Can you tell me a number? Come. Thirteen. I'm always working on a project. That would make sense. Won't let me. Okay. Won't let me what? Control. Tip. Talking. No, talking. Someone's controlling me. Objective. Foot. Wish you'd go. Come. Do you feel anything? Cherry. Tired Jeff. Complete. Again. Back in Reno. Mode. Back in. Okay, Colin. Do you hear me come by? Do you Mom. hear me? Yep. I hear you. No. Scared. Character. Alter. Um, I want to say, weirdly enough, summoned. I don't know if it's like summoned. I don't know if a number of things back in the comment. That. Okay, you said 13, somewhere back in. Behind you? There is a storm. Just, Just kidding. kidding. I'm sorry, it's snowing. Shut up. I'm not. 
Seriously. Corn soup? I don't know, that shit is making sense at all to me. Bad. Do you know who Okay, I'm done. Okay. I feel like literally none of that made sense. I think it's like, again, my, um, my, my feeling is that it's just messing with me, us. Like, it's like, no one can talk, you know? Yeah, this is kind of pissing me off. Yeah. You know, because we came all the way here. I think that's kind of its purpose. To finish this out, yeah. you should spend 15 minutes on that up here. You can keep your light on. I'll go in the body room down there. Oh, we got that part yet. Yeah, I'll, I, I think we should do it alone for a little bit. It's like he was saying how sometimes it's like normal in here. Earlier today, it felt really charged. Yeah. Right now, it does not feel charged at all. You know? But you have to kind of also understand like, we just can't make stuff happen. Right? No. Okay, everybody, so we haven't exactly gotten the most activity tonight. Um, some really cool stuff like the Edison thing, but other than that, really just not that much. So for the end of the night, I'm going to have Jeff stay up here for 20 minutes by himself up here in the Washoe Club. You ready for that? I am, yes. Yep. It's been a long day. And I'm going to go downstairs to the crypt where we haven't been yet. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we still got some interesting things. It just goes to show you, like, some of the most famous places. You just can't create activity. No. We just don't fake stuff. And it's not that we doubt it. It's just that you just can't Some make. nights it just doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah, But anyway. But we got, like, 30 more minutes. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay, good luck. I'm gonna go down there. Oh, I will. This just quit right when I started to hit the record button on this. The camera shut off. I'm going to go back now and sh shut the light off. We're going to do an EVP session. Go to dark. It shut my light off. Okay, I've got this box here in front of me that I'm going to let you talk to, okay? Since you don't want to communicate with us tonight, let's sit here and talk. Tell me your name in this box here. Let me know who you are, and I'll just listen for a while. Show me who you are. Who 
who's here with me? Again, I have this box in my hand. You can talk and this will pick it up. Let me know who you are. Okay, everybody. Um, Colin's downstairs. I'm up in the ballroom. It used to be the doctor's office. And uh, we've been at this for hours and hours here. Um, I've got a digital recorder that's going. Um, just trying to be silent if I get any EVPs that we can maybe pick up. But tonight, the entity or entities that are here, good or bad, um, for whatever reason, have really kind of chosen not to communicate with us. We're not really sure why. Um, I definitely feel there's things here, but uh, one of the, the barmaids downstairs actually thought that she, the evil entity had left with another guy that was here investigating that did some I don't know what he did to maybe make it go with him, but maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But it's been very quiet. So I'm going to let this play a little longer and see if we can maybe get some intelligent recordings on the device. So I'm just going to be quiet for a bit. Okay, everybody, I've spent about 30 minutes now up here on my own in the ballroom. Um, I really haven't gotten um, hardly any sounds uh, or anything. I don't know if this is just a night they don't want to communicate with us. Either way, uh, I'm going to be closing this out because uh, we've been here for hours on end. We're getting really tired. I've stayed up here in the ballroom. Colin's gone gone downstairs with the crypt area. Uh, I said I'd meet him in 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes. So I'm going to sign off and uh, maybe we'll catch some things on the EVP uh, recorder that I've got going, I've had going. Uh, I'll review that uh, after the investigation's over with and hopefully we find something. But uh, for now, uh, I'm going to sign off. See ya. All right, so here I go alone into the crypt. I've got some equipment with me. It is pitch black in here. So remember, back in the day, there were like 70 bodies stored on top of each other in here. All right, so. I'm here alone in the crypt. Here's the REM pod. I'm gonna set this up right here. Here is the EMF flashlight. I set that up right there. Oh. Is there anybody here? Before I do a spirit box, I'm gonna do a really quick voice recorder session. Okay, here we go. Is there somebody here in the crypt with me? You know, I actually feel really heavy in here, weirdly enough. I can't see anything because of that flashlight. Are you, uh, are you in this room with me? Can you make a noise? There's a noise. Oh. 
Also, I don't know if I was just tripping out, but it looked like the flashlight was like uh, pulsing. Can you come sit next to me? Can you touch that red light that's, uh, can you touch this red light that's sitting right here? Another noise, it's coming from like the floor over there. Can you use your voice and uh, talk to me? It's almost like. It's like I'm hearing footsteps or something from above. This is the third floor above me. This is uh, Scotty's room above me. Scotty, are you here with me? You know what? I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna pause the voice recorder. Right when I sat down. Are you right here? Are you sitting next to me? Keep doing that. Yeah, you can sit next to me. Are you in this room? I'm hearing footsteps upstairs. Are you up in Scotty's room? On the third floor? I just heard a whistle. Did you just whistle somewhere in here? Oh my god, I thought I just heard a fucking scream. Hello? Freaky as fuck. I wonder if he heard that upstairs. To describe that to you guys, I just thought I heard like a whistle and then like a almost. But it sounded like it came from like here, you know? Okay, I'm gonna use the spirit box. Honestly, it feels like it just got colder too. Is there somebody in here with me? In the crypt? I'm all alone. And if you're the demon, I'd especially love to talk to you, whoever that creepy thing is, whatever you are that keeps crawling on the walls. It's just me and you in this room. What's your name? Is somebody stopping you from telling me your name? What do you have to say? I how the REM pod is suddenly silent too. Oh. Oh. Oh, I feel something in here. I feel something. Oh, it feels like somebody's breathing on me. Are you in here now? Ooh, I gotta tell you guys, I got a major chill up and down my body all of a sudden. The whole night, we haven't known who you are. Lena? Is this you? No? What's your name? Ooh, I feel like really creepy all of a sudden. 
What do you have to say? If you could tell me one thing, what would you say? Kill me? Horrible? Come on, who are you? This thing just hasn't gone off. I'm starting to hear a weird ringing. Okay, if you're here in the crypt, who are you? Can you move something in here? There's a creak from that floorboard, it seemed like up there. This one. Please, can you move something in here for me? It's literally so quiet in here, guys. It's like hard to explain how just weird this is. Like this whole place feels supercharged, but it's like silent. Do you have anything? Can you do anything for me? I would seriously just love to see you move something like this rock or one of these chairs. It would make me really, really happy. Just to know that you're here. Come on, growl at me. Footstep from above me. Scotty, did you end your life in this building? Scotty, did you end your life in here? I don't know, guys. It's like you get a piece of evidence in here. And then all of a sudden you get no evidence for a while. Then you get something really interesting. Then nothing. Can't tell who the hell is talking to us. There's no consistency in any of it. I don't really know what to think. I mean, this is the Washoe, this is the Washo Club. This is such a historic, dark, just classic location in the paranormal. This is like a ghost hunters dream this place but I mean we just haven't had anything monumental happen tonight and that's that's not saying that nothing can happen in here and I'm not doubting anybody who's ever had an experience here but we don't fake shit in our videos so it's like I mean I just have to be honest with y'all it's kind of like when we went to Bobby Mackey's we really didn't get much at Bobby Mackey's even though everybody claims that that's like the most demonically haunted evil place on earth I honestly didn't really feel anything that wacky at Bobby Mackey's. Kind of wrong, didn't it? Wacky at Mackey's. Washoe is kind of the same thing. It just seems almost like an off night. We had a lot at the very beginning. And the Edison thing was really weird. And just some of the noises. Even in here when I heard that scream like 20 minutes ago. But, I mean, just listen. This is your last chance to let me know. Is there something I can do to help you? Oh, I hear Jeff coming in. I guess that's it. All right. So I just came out here because you f heard that too. Oh, I hear Jeff coming in. I guess that's it. On camera the sounds of somebody coming in here and I thought Jeff would be down here but look <laughs> there's the bar no one's here here's the doorway that Jeff would have had to come through and his bag is not here I just heard something too 
Hello? There's the crypt right there. I guess I'll just do this. Did you just come into this room? Okay, things just got noticeably more creepy in here. Just to show y'all. There's the crypt where I just came from. Can you touch that red light if you just came in here? What? No. Yeah, did you just come in here? I, I just, I'm just coming down. You haven't come in here? No. I swear to fucking God, I thought I just heard you come in here and the door slam. Okay. And then I said in there, oh, that's Jeff, and I better go now. And then I came out here, and it was no one was here. No, I just, I just got here. <sighs> Are you you ready to go? Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. That was weird. <gasps> Look at that. All right, you guys. So, like I was just saying in there. Sometimes you come to big locations like the Sally House and it's a ton of activity and it's so creepy and you leave frightened. But here, um, we really didn't get much. You know, we had a couple really compelling pieces of evidence. Whatever just happened was freaky to me. I'm still kind of freaked out in here. Overall, it was not nearly as uh, active or as freaky as I thought it was gonna be. But that doesn't mean, like I've said, that it's not haunted. But we don't lie to you guys and we're not embellishing just to make a good video the history and our experience stands and uh you know it is what it is so thank y'all for watching be sure to tune in next week um we have so many great episodes especially from this nevada series but we did the washoe club let me know what you guys thought below um if you're watching right now um, let me know what you thought of the investigation um were you expecting more activity is this kind of what you thought was going to happen i don't know Definitely took us a little bit by surprise, but um, it's Colin here. We're gonna head back to our hotel in Reno. It's about a 45 minute drive. It's well into the night right now, at least one to 2 a.m. And uh, as always, everybody. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shit, real shit. close with holy, that light. Holy, holy. Oh. Now, now we have none. Yeah, here. that's fine. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. Here, it's too early. Stay spooky. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look it. Look it, look it. <laughs> I guess it wants us to stay now. Can you just give us one farewell goodbye? Just light it up for us. Come on, spirits. We're leaving right now. No. They just want to give a tiny bit and that's it. Yep. Anyway. Stay All right. spooky. Good night, y'all. <laughs> wow. God.